Today is Wednesday, July 10th, 2024, and you're listening to the Ask a Christian podcast, and I'm your host, Nate. So today, as I contemplate my life and feeding myself to an alligator, um, <laughs> you'll see. I always say that, right? Does that mean like you'll see, just like cancel it and listen to something else, or you'll see like you'll listen and actually see by hearing? It doesn't matter. Anyway, so I cannot wait to get on Chatter, um, this new, apparently, Bells and Whistles app that is hopefully coming to us poor Android users soon enough, uh, because I'm told moderators will have more controls. Right now, the best I can do is try to yell and scream over people to get some sort of control when everyone freaks out for no reason. Um, And there is a mute all button, but it's very inconvenient to get to, and it it takes too long. Anyway, so uh, stay tuned. Things will get better, I'm told. Anyway, um, in the meantime, we continue our Exodus 18 topic from yesterday with Michael about whether or not God doesn't know some stuff. Um, so we go through the Bible passages and the explanations for that, and is it really mental gymnastics to try to twist the scripture? No, it's just having a cohesive understanding because you've read the book. Um, if you bounce around from Old Testament to New Testament and Isaiah to Ezekiel to Matthew, you may seem a little confused, and some of these explanations may sound confusing. If you just read the book, Um, you see how you don't really need apologetics or mental gymnastics for it because the story you read in the book from beginning to end, because it's a book, 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 um, explains everything completely perfectly and concisely. So there's no need for apologetics. It just tells you. Um, The reason you come away with the understanding we do is because we've read the book. Okay, so um, then we just get into a weird thing where someone... Michael, <clears throat> just starts making these wild anti-supernatural claims and like Moses mythicist, like you may have heard Jesus mythicist who don't think Jesus ever was a real person or existed. You, you may not have heard it because those people are very small and crazy um, in number. But um, now apparently there's Moses mythicist. So um, he's like, well, you know, there's just not evidence of, you know, the Red Sea and all this other stuff, which, you know, we, we explain, turns out. Um, great reason for it. Anyway, um, but yeah, he's like, well, look, I believe there could have been this guy, and then I believe the supernatural claim totally couldn't have existed, it just didn't happen, because supernatural things just don't happen. That's not a good argument. <laughs> like, just because you aren't convinced or you don't have evidence that compels you doesn't mean something didn't happen. It means you're just giving your opinion. Like, you clearly, you, I mean, the person saying this is an atheist who denies the supernatural world or anything supernatural or spiritual. So it's like, just because you deny it doesn't make it false. Like, oh, pillars of fire in the sky. Oh, that just didn't happen. Well, well, why? Because you just don't think it happened. Anyway, um, so we talk about anti-supernaturalism claims, and then we get on to Zionism and uh, Muslims. So this Muslim person comes in, and um, I mean, oh, man, this is where everything goes awry. It's like, Chris is doing so well. Um but, you know, he sniffs out this person's a Muslim uh, from a uh, chat that you guys can't see um, unless you join the Clubhouse app. But no reason because I'm, I'm jumping that ship the second I get a chance. Um, so stay tuned. But anyways, uh, in chat, they start asking, like, you know, why Christians support Zionism and, and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, he sniffs out this person's a Muslim. So it immediately goes like rabid hyena, um, you know, because Muslims who are extreme or, you know, just proper Muslims, depending on if they just read their book and do what it says, um, you know, don't really like Christians um, or anyone who's not Muslim. So uh, that's where he come, he's coming from, right? So if you're a hammer, everything's a nail. So, you know, I, I there's plenty of Muslims who don't see it that way, and then it could be argued, well, they're not real followers of the religion, because if they were, then they would. But that, that's too much minutiae. Forget all that. The point is, he just goes like attack, uh, like attack 1,000 and then gets jumped on by this other person and, you know, to their credit, yes, it does seem like the questioner is has like a, is using deception or has a little manipulative motive in mind. But the point is, don't take the bait, people. Don't pay the troll toll. If you sniff that out, something weird or deceptive is going on, like, I don't know, play the game. Like, to, uh, it, it's weird, right? Because everyone has an idea. Like, I don't want to tell everyone to be just like me. But, I mean, you know, I'm pretty sure, like, yelling and screaming is probably not the right answer. So don't be just like me, but don't be like that. Um... But the thing is, look, if, if you sense someone, innocent as doves, why is this serpents? Remember the Bible says something about that. So if you see someone coming and you've already figured out their motivation and it's like you know their game, well, 
why give your cards away? I don't know. Keep them close to the chest. So let let them try to like lead you or whatever, and then you know you already can form the answer you know you want to respond with because you see where they're coming from. So just you know wait until they lead you along this path, and then clobber them with the truth that you know they need to hear with gentleness and respect, rather than like stopping them and just being like, ah, you're a Muslim, ah, you're a blah, blah, blah. They still have a mouth and air in their lungs and words came out of their head. So, I mean, it doesn't matter what they are or aren't. Like, speech was spoken in a question form. So just answer the question, um, which the question is answered. Oh, good Lord, help me. So anyways, I'm not perfect. Good Lord, everyone knows I've got plenty of flaws, like way worse than talking over someone. Um, but, um, so, yeah, that's it. Um, enjoy the discussion. And pray that I get an Android invite for a chatter app soon, because apparently there's better moderation. Uh, tools available. So, um, enjoy this day, and we'll see you later. Take care. So, I was looking again at the, uh, the Bible verses we talked about yesterday. Let me pull them up here. Um, da, 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 da. Exodus 18, was it? Genesis 18. Er, right, just, yeah. Genesis 18 and then um, Genesis 22 about Isaac. So it's interesting. Um, I went to the NASB because I know that some people really like that, or most people really like that. I think it's a decent translation. So one of the things that's interesting about it is there's a couple of times in it where like uh, in 21, it says, I will go down now and see whether uh, they have done entirely as the outcry, which has come to me, capitalized, uh, indicates. And and if not, I will know. So this is clearly God talking, right? Um, so when Chris was saying yesterday that it was talking about the three, the three visitors, yeah, because uh, it says here, then the men rose up from here. They looked uh, down towards Sodom, and Abraham was walking with them and sent them off. The Lord said, uh, shall I hide from Abraham? What will I do? Blah, 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 blah. So, so the three men are different because in 21, again, I'll say it again. I will go down now and see whether they have done entirely as the outcry, which has come to me, capital, uh, indicates. And if not, I will know. So this, this is God saying, if not, I will know, not somebody else. Um, so I found that interesting. And then in Genesis, and, and then, so that's one kind of, that's one kind of thought that I had. And then in Genesis 22, talking about uh, the sacrifice of Isaac, um, um, angel Lord, yeah, so basically, you know, the whole thing go up, you know, um, Abraham says, you know, or Isaac says, where's the offering? Abraham says, the Lord will provide it. Um, and then basically gets gets them all tied up, about to sacrifice them. And then an angel says, you know, nope, you know, don't, don't do this. And then God says, uh, where is it? My brain's not working quite right this morning. All right. Uh, tw Genesis well, twenty two. Well, before we go to Genesis, can we? Yeah. I mean, because they're completely different stories. Well, let's. Yeah, they let's, are. Yeah. So, welcome, Courtney. Uh, you'll figure out what we're talking about here in just a second, and I, I think you probably will have some valuable input. But, I mean, there's only so many, so many ways you can go with this, right? So, uh, big picture, the Bible makes a claim. God knows all things. So we were talking about yesterday. How do you reconcile this where it seems like God doesn't know stuff? And right, like, why stop there? Like, there's tons of things. Like, you know, God repented. God was sorry. He made people. Like, God did all this stuff. So, like, are there really all these places in the Bible where, like, the authors are like, yeah, God doesn't know stuff? Or is it something else? So a few of these something else's, um, it could be. And, you know, you like anyone who wants to challenge it, just like anything else, could say, oh, a fanciful tale. Is it true? Okay, well, is also the claim that <clears throat> God doesn't know stuff. Is it true? So, I mean, all we have to work with is the best of human hypothesization here. 
So, I mean, one, is it like a, is it an anthropomorphization, right? So like, is, is this using like uh, language and, and attributing it, um, you know, to God traits of humans? Um, is that what it's doing? Or, you know, it could be like some people, I, I don't know, um, I don't know who, but I mean, apparently some scholars uh, see this as like a test. So even though God knows this is like a test to reveal like the heart of the people. So it's like, you know, I will go down and see, for example, and then I will know. It like gives the people a chance to like demonstrate the position of their heart by like, I don't know, testing them. I don't even know if I would go down that track, but I mean, that's something you have to contend with, with whoever the scholars are. And then you have like, it, it could be like an authoritative statement of like divine justice, right? Like God's going down and seeing, could that be understood as like divine justice being about to be done? Um, and then I think the one that m is most appealing from the Christian worldview is this is a relational God. Like th that's the whole, the whole biblical Christian worldview is this is a God who is not like, you know, deist and just like kind of sets things spinning and pieces out. Like it's a God that is very much relational with his creation. So how would that look if God displays like true omnipotent or omniscience and people are like having a conversation with God? He's like, yeah, know that. But God, yeah, know that. But God, yeah, know that. They're like, wow, what a, what a jerk. And then they'd get struck with lightning. And then the complain, people would complain about that. So could it be like, yes, God knows this stuff. And he's having this relational conversation as, as if he's meeting someone on a human level um, in this relationship aspect. And I mean, I mean, I mean, if anything, that is hand in glove with the Christian worldview that God is relational. So I would say for, you could like swap them away and be like, I don't buy it. I don't buy it. I don't buy it. You're spinning a web. You're spinning a web. Um, but really spinning a web against what? Like you have the people who put the Bible together. Um, they undoubtedly know everything that's in there. So is it their understanding? They just have a bunch of conflicting stuff like God doesn't know stuff. And then there's a claim that, well, he doesn't know everything, but also he knows all things. I can't believe people are that stupid. And of course they're not. And it's been scrutinized for thousands of years. So that's what I would say to that. And I mean, I guess that works for the, I mean, that were, I mean, those explanations cover all the things like Abraham and Isaac, where we're going next. Um, you know, God repented. God was sorry he made man. So, I mean, those explanations <clears throat> would, would cover basically any omniscience gap that God doesn't know. Why doesn't he know? And I mean, personally, the, the relational idea is straight in line with the worldview. Like it makes sense to me. Um, is that actually the reason? Or, you know, if God was here on a Petri dish for us to stare at, would he be like, actually, no, it was the first one. Uh, it was the first one, not the relationship one. Like, yeah, I am a relational God, but no, the first one was more accurate. But who knows? But in, in the best our human understanding has, um, that fits hand in glove with the biblical worldview. Want to respond, Michael, and then we'll get... Yeah, Courtney in. and so what's interesting is, right, so... I guess I'll say what I have to say, and then there's a there's a question that just kind of sits at the tip of my tongue. So I understand what it is that you're saying. Um, when you're talking about before in the book of James, and I have to ask this question because I, I'm just not 100% sure. Is, is James supposed to be the author of the book of James as well? Let me look I, that up. Yeah, I asked that as a genuine question. I'm not sure, right? Because yeah, I want know, to say yes, but I genuinely want to fact check that. I think right. so, but yes, yeah. go on. Right, because we know that you know, like some of the, you know, like um, you know, yeah, the, like Paul the, writes a lot of other letters. Yeah, exactly. Right. So that's why I just wasn't sure. Right. But in uh, in Gen, and this is hard, you know, and I don't mean to drop a bomb just quite so early, but the from people I've spoken to. And from the, the bit of research that I've been able to do. Um, Apparently, yes, it is James the Just, also okay. the brother of Jesus. Right. That um, Genesis was supposedly written by this guy named Moses. There's no, there's no evidence outside the Bible that this person ever existed, even if we grant that he existed. Um, this is God talking, right? Even though it's Moses writing it down. So... Either, right, so if, if what the Bible says is true, right, all, all scriptures God breathed and suitable for instruction, right, then there, there doesn't seem to be any ambiguity in what it says in Genesis, where Moses is writing down what God said. Then you have, uh, you know, then you have the other story 
you know, further on in 22, talking about the whole, um, the whole Abraham and Isaac thing. And I, I forget now, I, I think it, I think, I don't remember that it's first or second Corinthians, the Bible verse it says, and depends on the version you read. Um, I think the, I think the NIV or NASB says something like, God is not one who would confuse. Um, God's not the author of confusion. Yeah, I think actually that's a KJV version. <clears throat> uh, I think if memory serves. And But I know that people like – I've spent some time talking to Matt Slick, and the reason I try to go to NASB because, is because there are many Christians, he, him included, who really like the NASB, uh, the 1995 version, because they think it is a really good translation. So I just like to use that, and I hate the these and thous of the King James. It's silly old English. Um, so what, what kind of begs the question is – if it's not like it, like it seems to be just false that it's, you know, that, I mean, there's, I think it's Dan Barker, who's a former evangelical pastor, is now an atheist. He wrote in his book, uh, Godless, basically that one, one of the kind of lines in it is, can you think of a book that's caused more confusion than the Bible, which seems to kind of, um, you know, sitting at the, t sitting at the tip of my tongue. And then the question that kind of sits on the uh, the other question is, do you, can you kind of step outside for just a second? I can. Look at it from my perspective. I don't mean outside your house. Um, and look at it from my perspective and, and, and understand how to me, the things you just said to try to explain it and offer your quote unquote answer, sounds like you're trying to make excuses. Yes, I preempted that with, you can say that's exactly what we're doing. But that's the best of human reasoning. And I know Courtney and Chris both want to go, Chris, you sit there in your dungeon. You were, wait, you were late. You got to wait for Courtney. Um, okay, anyway, so let me recap a couple things. Yes, Michael, I can I totally understand that. I was just waiting to say hi. I was just like, hey, everyone. <laughs> okay, so first of all, it wasn't James. I thought yesterday it was, it was James. It was, in, it was 1 John 3.20. For whenever our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart. And... He knows everything. Okay, so that, I mean, that's like direct. Like there's plenty of verses that talk about how his wisdom or his wisdom is beyond measure. Um, you know, he's beyond understanding, all this other stuff. Um, but I mean, the one in First John 3.20 outright claims everything. Everything means everything. Okay, oh, okay. but, 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 but uh, okay. Well, yeah, just wondering who the author of that was. Of First John? Yeah. Like, is that Paul as well? I'm just not sure. No. So. Yeah, I have no idea. Yeah, it's the Apostle John. Yeah, um, so John, the son of Zebedee. Yes, the Apostle John. Okay, so because uh, I'm sure they have great things to say, so I want to get to them. But um, I would say, first of all, in that verse I just read, right? So what, what do you mean by confusion? And I feel very comfortable with, with this. Like, yes, looking from your outside Codemus demonic perspective. I understand it, right? You read things in the Bible, you're like, wow, that is confusing. I don't understand that. The, the Trinity, wow, that is so confusing. I don't understand that. But God is not the author of confusion. Therefore, it's a confusing book. Uh, Hail Satan. I totally understand that perspective. It makes 100% sense. Um, however, I, I'm excited to hear what Chris is going to say after Courtney, because I think it may be in line with, with my thoughts, which is, uh, look, I, I mean, right now, the verse, one of the verses I just read about God's omniscience says, you know, his wisdom is like beyond understanding, like, you know, how God is beyond comprehension. Like, don't you think that could be confusing if God is beyond everything and we can't can, like comprehend um, everything about God? Like, couldn't that right there lead to confusion? I would say yes. Like, I wouldn't need someone to make that case. I'll make that case. Yes. But when we talk about confusion, does that mean like, like, cause straight up and like Babel, right? Like he caused, he like con convoluted all their languages and, you know, caused them to be confused. So, and you know, there's other places where he confused like the, his enemies and like confused armies. So does that mean, again, people didn't know what they were putting in their own Bible, that they were just filling it with contradictions? Or does that mean in the context, like God is not the author of confusion and this, this context, like we can go back and we can read the thing, but it's going to be about uh, basically God's people. So if you're a child of God, you're not confused. So it's like, oh, do, do I follow God? Is this what God wants? I, I don't know. Cause it's talking about your heart too. So it's like, my heart, or you know, my heart's pulling me this way, or I think I should do this way, or man's wisdom and God's wisdom. Like, 
it, I guarantee the context is going to be in relation to God is not confusing. If you're a servant of Jesus, if you're a disciple of Christ, you're not going to be led astray. You're not going to be confused in what you know is right and what you're wrong in. Um, I'll go ahead and pull up that context and we can read it because I oh, guarantee, because yeah. I mean, yeah, like it says straight up, God confuses some people. Yeah, no, and it's, always, yeah, yeah. The, the whole deception thing, yeah, that's something different. Um, but there's another, and but it's it's like, so if I put my Christian hat back on for a second and I think back, uh, I can't remember, I want to say Matthew, but I may be wrong. It might be Mark, where it says, uh, not everyone will not everyone will see and understand. Not everyone will read like only you know, the God's people. That's yeah. like so. I mean, I I can put that hat back on, and reconcile it that way. Like so, I get that, right? But and then if I put on my Calvin my Chris Calvinist hat for a second, then I just be like, well, you know, it's like uh, Ephesians one eleven. All things are done for His purpose. You know, whatever's going to be is going to be. Uh, so be it kind of thing. I get it. And those are the kinds of things that just make me shrug my shoulders and say, I just, I don't care. Like, it's just so obviously um, not something that I should be putting any time and effort into. Anyway. So, what's uh, the actual question? Is it open to oh, oh, I think we've long left the actual yeah, yeah. question. Um, mm -hmm. But, I mean, I guess you can, I mean, you've been waiting forever, so I guess you can talk about whatever you, whatever you want. But I, I just wanted to give a parting thought, like where you, where you say you don't care, Michael, because it's just like too, the conversation too confusing or Christians are being too evasive or, or whatever. I'd say, well, look, you know, if you, if you want to know about someone's religion, let the people who practice that religion actually tell you how they view their own religion. And then it can, because it's not a battle between like some atheist that doesn't care about the Bible anyway, is trying to make a case that your God is confusing based on their own Christian's Bible. Or, you know, let the Christians tell you, like, well, look, it doesn't matter what some non-Christian views or interprets our Bible. They, admittedly, don't have the Spirit of God leading them into truth and understanding, whereas a, you know, saved, professing Christian disciple of Christ does. So let us go ahead and tell you how we interpret our own Bible. Um, so I would just say at that point, like, you know, if I, I'm not going to try to tell Muslims how to view their own scripture. I'd be like, well, look, if I care about what you guys think about your own religion, I'll, I'll ask you. Um, turns out I don't. So I never go to Muslim rooms and ask them if they come in here. I, whatever. Courtney, yes, go ahead. Talk about whatever you want. Um, the original question was about uh, Exodus or uh, Genesis 18 and uh, Genesis 22. Uh, but you can basically add any of the other stuff there about God not being omniscient. So how can God be omniscient when at Sodom and Gomorrah, the angel of the Lord, you know, and it seems like God is clearly speaking. Um, so it's not just like angel, angel, but it's like God speaking. Where he says, I will go down and see if, you know, these reports of Sodom and Gomorrah are really as bad as I'm hearing. Yeah. Um, things yeah. like So when things like that happen and like Abraham and Isaac, he's like, oh, now I know you were faithful because you're mm -hmm. willing to like he didn't before. So yes. that was it's the subject. Yeah. Question. Yeah. And just to kind of put a button in it, just Courtney, I'm sorry, just just to kind of put a button in it. So I'm sorry. Courtney. It's, yeah, not really. Um, <laughs> okay. So, yeah, it's yeah. Uh, so for Chris, it's kind of what we were talking about yesterday. I looked at the verse a little bit more and it says actually like, like um, me with capital M. So it's God talking. So it wasn't about the three people like they thought it was before, which is fine. Like the context, I think, is important. Anyway, there was that. And so and what I mean when I say like I don't care is I mean, the reason I come around is because, you know, the good conversation and stuff like that. But it's like to, to kind of put a button. It's it's these types of things which at the end of the day add to my conviction and my and and me being convinced that this stuff is just it's just it's just all made up but, anyway. but wait how <laughs> sorry, sorry courtney i really am sorry i am so sorry but how do you get that how does that add to your conviction like i mean like i i don't get it like it i think the the answers are perfectly fine if someone's like well, look, God's not the author of confusion, but here he is confusing people. It's like, well, no, he's talking about like for people who are, are his and trying to find out the direction to follow Christ, like he is not confused in that. So you're like, OK, this is why it's crazy. And I don't care. Like, how is that not a very consistent, perfectly fine answer? That's my confusion. Oh, no, it's a it's a consistent answer. But it like so it it like I said, I guess I can't. This is one of those things where I wish I we were talking yesterday, you know, take a USB and plug you into my head. Um, it, it's like it's that kind of thing. Like a, it's like I wish I had the capacity to convey. It could be that I'm missing the words, but I have the capacity to convey. It's, it's not it's not one thing. Right. But it's like when, when you when you go through the totality of it and when you have to 
when you have to engage in the type of apologetics necessary, like I see it, and it's, it's not a failing on your part, Courtney's, Chris's, or anyone else's, right? What I see is apologetic gymnastics. Well, I guess we just disagree. So, I mean, I, for like a, you know, a near lifelong Christian, it's like, well, look, uh, when I read the Bible, there's no apologetics unless, you know, God is supernaturally imparting it in my head in a second, because like just reading the Bible cover to cover, and I take all the totality of the scripture, um, and, you know, I get to the story of Babel. I'm like, yep, they're confused. Uh, armies turning against each other. Yep, they're confused. God is not the author of confusion. Oh, for people who are trusting to follow Jesus, uh, yes, they are not confused. God is very clear in, in this process. Not a problem. And also not an apologetic. It's just like on the spot, like as you're reading and comprehending it. So it's like if it sounds like someone's weaving a big web of apologetics, um, whenever I and I imagine billions of other Christians read the Bible, we're just, there is no apologetic. There is no like web spinning. We just read it because we, we know the character of God from reading the rest of the Bible. So we're like, yep, they're confused. They're confused. They're confused. God's not the author of confusion. Yes. And then you read the context and you find out like for, for servants and disciples of Jesus, there is no like, oh, should I have done this? Should I have done that? No, it's not confusing. And it talks about God as the, uh, you know, God is also a God of peace. Okay, Courtney, talk as long as you want. No one will interrupt you. Welcome to you. Hi. Can I just know what the topic Go is? Ahead. Can Courtney re-explain it as she talks? Sorry. Yeah. It's open theism. The question is, why is it that God speaks in the, the Bible as though he doesn't know things if God knows everything according to like First John, what is it, 3 something, 20? 20? Yeah, where it basically says, um, if our hearts can dim us uh we know that god is greater than our hearts and knows everything so um i was just going to quickly agree with nate um i think there are many explanations um god tests us so that we know what's in our heart yeah i know the text says so that he knows but the point is um whenever you are parenting a child are you going to say like okay so i know this child very well this child tends to do this Whenever you test your child, you likely know the answer, but the, the point in a test as, what is it, First John, I think it's James 1 says, is so that we know, right, the endurance, um, consider it all joy, my brothers and sisters, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. So the only way that a test for you produces endurance is for you to know what's in your own heart, right? You have to be tested in order to know that. Psalm 19 kind of discusses like people discerning their own sins, hidden sins, deep sins inside of them. The only way you're gonna be able to discern those is if you're tested. So even if, even if the question is, why is it that God, um, or why is it that it seems like this is just a, a ginned up apologetic? I would say, I don't think it's a ginned up apologetic. I think it fits rather well with the narration, because in the narration, you see God also says, you know, I was walking. So there's an anthropomorph, like God kind of says, I have arms, I have legs, I walk, I have eyes, I hear. Does God really have arms, legs, eyes? Does he? No. So we're not making a special case or special pleading. Well, oh no, what do we do here? It looks like our God doesn't know something. And yet we believe our God is, knows everything. So how do we no, I mean, it falls right in alignment with the way that God reveals himself to humans. So I think the all the answers that Nate said, I agree with other than the there was just one that I was like, mm, I could see where he's going. I think it was the last one that you gave Nate, but like all the other ones where I was thumbing up, I was like, yes, I agree with that answer. Um, anthropomorphism, the way that God relates to scripture uh, relates uh, to us via scripture. And then what was he? Oh, when God is speaking, like with Moses um, or with Abraham and God goes, yeah, yeah, shut up. I already know all of the, yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know. And you're like, dude, can I just vent to you? Like, am I allowed to just have a conversation with you? <laughs> and if God's constantly interrupting you, yeah, I know, I know, I know that would be rather annoying. And so he just kind of lets you spill your beans here. And then he says, here's what you do or here's what's going to happen, blah, 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 blah. So I don't necessarily think that it's a ginned up answer. I think it fits with the theme of God, you know, being anthropomorphized 
to humans so that we can better understand our God while simultaneously being told that, you know, God doesn't have form. Like he's not like an idol that has, like we have to put up something in order to see him because the idols were a representation of their God. He, you know, so I, what do you think about that, Michael? Um, yeah, I get it. And it may sound like, I, I don't want it to sound dismissive, Courtney, because I appreciate the input. But I just like, um, yeah, just go back to what I said a minute ago. Like, it, like it's just, it is, it, it is just that like way, like when you talk about, like, there is no way, I don't think, for us to kind of do this kind of interpretive walk without anthropomorphizing the, the, this, uh, th this idea. Um, because well, it the, is anthropomorphized. I think that's what we're saying. The way we make sense of things is by trying to make it relatable to us. I get it. Um, but it is, it's, it, it's not, it's not something I'm able to reconcile. Maybe that's the better way to put it is what that it's you, not something I'm able to reconcile. What are you and, and it, and it just, to me, it just smacks of just people making stuff up. What are you well, trying then to? I, I, I'm well, just, I was, I was, yeah, go ahead, sir. Well, I mean, we have been at this for two days, <laughs> so I was gonna, I was gonna move on to Master Chris and see if he has a thought. Well, can I? I, I well, hang on. Want, I'm trying to. I'm trying I only to have five I'm words. Gonna... Five words. What? It's often a rhetorical device. Noted. Chris, would you like to say anything? So, so we're talking about God being the author of confusion. Is that the sticking point, or are we talking about open theism, or is it both? Uh, both. It's a little bit of both. I mean, if you want okay. to tackle the other one, since I think we pretty much said everything. Uh, yeah, whatever. The floor is yeah, yours. I mean, the world's well, your oyster. I mean, I can do this in thirty seconds. So the idea is not that we slide our own interpretation of the scriptures in there. The idea behind literal historical grammatical, as evangelicals read the scripture is that we are attempting to get to the author's intent as best we can. And I understand as postmoderns, people believe that you can't figure out the author's intent. This is what Foucault actually talked about, um, as well as Dorada. So, um, you know, but we believe you can get to the author's intent by reading the, the writings that they're writing. And so, you know, when we talk about anthropomorphisms, we talk about the grammatical ideas that are being used in the very writings that we're talking about. It's not that we're adding things or, you know, interpreting things in a special way. It is when Moses wrote that, what did he mean? You know, so that's what we're trying to get to. It's not that we're trying to do mental gymnastics. It's we're trying to get to what the scripture, we're try honestly trying to get to what did the author mean when he wrote it? And I understand, like, there's a modern predilection to postmodernism. Um, that didn't make sense. There is a current predilection to postmodernism as sort of the zeitgeist of our age that we can't discern the intent of an author any longer. Um, but I don't believe that that's true. Uh, the second thing I would say is, like, whatever the worst abuse, Michael, that you have seen in your profession... Um, whether it be to a child or to another human being, whatever that worst abuse is in your head, that is what you did to 1 Corinthians 14.33. You understand? Like, you did such violence to that text in yanking it out of its context that it became meaningless as a cudgel to attempt to pour meaning into other passages by abusing that text in, in the worst possible way. And so when we talk about God not being the author of, or, or actually the real translation is God is not the God of confusion. He does not preside over confusion um, in a church setting, because 1 Corinthians 14 is specifically talking about having order in the church. Um, and so that verse has no application outside of having order in a church. That's it. That's all it means. 
I to, might try have... to, to try to yank that out of context and apply it to the Tower of Babel is just it's it's violence to the text in the highest order. Well, for I for, might have said that slightly different, but I agree. <laughs> yeah, for clarification, I never brought up the Tower of Babel. Yeah, I did that. But yeah. I mean, it, it was for all the other confusion things, like you know, because you specifically brought up confusing. Well, no, and and no, and I used I used as as a point of reference, right? So I mean, like, yeah, I I understand um, I understand how you feel, Chris, but it, you know, it's like it doesn't seem to me to be, or it doesn't seem to me that it should be that big of a problem to use different parts of the Bible to reference different parts of the Bible. Is context important? Yes. I also will I also will say that. I agree with you that I think you can, um, albeit you may never be able to achieve a degree of, uh, of high degree of certainty, but I think you can look at things people have written and discern meaning. So I, I, I agree with you in that sense. I think that people who say, yeah, you yeah, can, yeah. Right? hey, at least you're not postmodern, dude. Like postmodernism is like brain melting, so. Yeah, I, 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 like I said, I don't think you can ever attain certainty, and there might be, and there may be, there is a chance that you may uh, not perceive nuance correctly. That could, but that could, in fairness, that could also be a failing of the writer in not conveying what they meant well, not necessarily you interpreting it incorrectly. Well, I, I want to go back to CEO, but there's there's two things here, right? The, one, there's what's the author's intent, and then there's what actually happened that the author is saying, right? So, so there, there's two different things. So if, if, okay, Moses, for example, writes down, God said, I will go see. Okay, well, what is the author's intent? Well, if Moses is doing a direct quote and God says, I will go see, um, then that was correctly conveyed and everyone can correctly understand the author's intent. His intent was to give a direct quote from God. So it's completely perfect. That's what the author meant. That's what the author said. Now, there's there's what actually that means, right? So so we know that, you know, God said, I will go see. But now what what does that actually mean beyond that? Because you've got these the author's intent, perfect. But now the author's intent was to say that God said, I will go see. Now, what does I will go see actually mean? So th there's two things. There's getting the author's intent, which his intent is correctly to con convey this quote from God. That's done. Now, what does this quote from God actually mean? Is it just a, 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 a voice of confusion that God's like, I will go see because I don't know stuff. Or I will go see because uh, I'm giving you a chance to reveal your true heart, which I already know. But let's see if you can reveal your heart and be like, oh, teachable moment. Um, or am I saying I will go see because I'm a relational God and I want to, um, you know, I, I want to relate to my creation instead of just being like not answering God, why aren't you answering? Cause I already know everything. Like, so, so there's another category. What would, what, would you agree with that, Chris? Cause I mean, we've got the author's intent, but if their intent is just to relay a fact, well now what does that fact mean? Like, I think Chris is going to agree. Uh, Courtney, I see your hand, and then yeah. uh, we'll go to CEO if you want. Why, why would God say, let me go see, if he can clearly see something's happening to provoke him to say, let me go see? Do you see what I mean? Yeah, and this was predicated on the, like, outcries of, um, you know, from the yeah. city because it was so godless and evil. So it's like you're already dealing with, like, a supernatural God who these people's cries are reaching heaven. Mm -hmm. I don't believe in heaven. I don't believe in a God. Why are you here? So, so for the people who believe it, right, it's like you already have a supernatural God getting pleased up to heaven, the abode of God, uh, because this place is so darn evil. So it's like we're already dealing with like supernatural and spiritual aspects. Um, I, I mean, it makes sense to me. Uh, CEO, you have anything you'd like to add? Uh, yeah, no, just, just the, in, another example. When God asked Adam, where are thou? He doesn't really need to know. He knows where he is. It's for Adam to be aware that he's hiding. So I think, you know, Michael, like as a parent, you've probably done something similar with a kid. So I don't think it's I still really very thing. complex at all. I ain't hear anybody. Yeah. Uh, what, well, Michael? Did you say you can't hear? 
No, I said that I didn't hear most of what CEO said. Like, am I the only one who didn't hear what he said? Can you hear me? Oh, no, I heard him. Okay, so my thought. Yeah, I, I heard yeah, him. He, he came in crystal clear. Yeah, oh, I just, yeah, I just, you yeah, having years of not hearing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, I just said quick. I just say quickly, it's like when God asked Adam where he was, like God knew where Adam was, but that was for Adam to be aware of it. He was hiding. And I said, as parents, we, we often have done similar things with our kid. Yeah. Uh, yes, I understand. I understand that. Um, I actually tried really hard to not do stuff like that. I remember my mom doing stuff like that with me. I tried. Oh, to... I do this still. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. <clears throat> well, the reason I don't do it is because my daughter's a, a grown woman now. Um, so, but yeah, no, I, I get it. Uh, I do get it. But, but, and it's hard because when talking about this, it's, it's virtually impossible for me to set aside. So when you say stuff like, you know, Moses wrote down, yeah, like I, I glitch on that point right there because the reading that I have done is that the scholarly consensus like among historians is that Moses is just a myth, like never actually was a person. Oh, Lord. Um, and so it's, uh, you know, like, the, like I kind of, I get stuck at that. We say, you know, Moses wrote like, no, he didn't. <laughs> like, wait. Is, you know, but that's a, that's maybe a difference. Uh, different yeah. Wait. Uh, so are you saying like, like Moses just didn't exist or are you saying yeah, like, my, as the yeah, main, that's my belief. Or are you that's saying like at, as the manuscripts, as we have them now, as the copies that Moses sounds like the first one. The copies. No, no, that 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 the person Moses was never a real person, and that it was just yeah, you just, yeah, a mythical thing, like much like God. Well, like, why, I thought why Jesus would you mythicist pick a Moses? was bad enough. Why why Moses mythicist now? Yeah, no, I, I don't understand. Like Jesus, I can understand someone being like, yeah, let's let's make up this guy um, that you know dies and rises again like fine i could maybe see something extravagant like that right a guy that goes up listen a guy that goes up after being raised by people not his own okay goes up into a mountain hears from god creates a following via this message and then eventually dies what's the point why would you make this up for which then a secondary religion is based on? If it's all myth, at what point did the myth start and why would the myth start? When there were previous other, quote, folklores and legends that you could piggyback off of that to me would probably be a better story if we're making a, you know, cinema here. I, in, in all honesty, and maybe it's that, that I'm not feeling particularly charitable this morning, but I'm not sure you want the answer to I that. I do. Question. I don't ask questions that I don't want answers to. Okay. So I think, like, while I think that, uh, so, so not to be too hyperbolic, mm -hmm. while I think that there are some points in the Bible which can be pointed to as uh, historically correct, I think the myth part of the Bible starts somewhere around Genesis 1 and ends somewhere around Revelation 22. Okay, so that was a non-answer. No, 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 I'm, I'm telling you that I think that with the exception of a couple of actual historical points in the Bible, that the whole damn thing is made up. Yeah, no, I get that. I understand what you mean, but I'm saying that's, that doesn't really address my question. The reason why I'm asked, like, it's all made up, I get, that's why you're an atheist. I understand that. But I'm saying specifically this Moshe character, right? He's, he's not a God. He, he's just, he's, first of all, he's like Jewish and, you know, Jewish people right? Ah, who cares? Right? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm being serious, right? That's the whole, that's the whole like mindset here, right? I don't have a problem. With no, no, not you, not you. I'm just saying like, for people that are like, let's make up a story. You're going to make up a story about Jewish people, which you don't like, not you, not you, you general people, general, which people don't like, and then say that this is the guy who presents the religion that we should all follow like it doesn't make sense you you get what i'm saying like like if if i had a problem with a specific group of people i certainly would not create an entire religion and a mythical person who is jewish in and of himself who then creates a massive following which then all the other secondary religions such as Christianity and Islam, etc., which then follow suit to and then ultimately make the massive climax at 
because God picked Moses and through him, the people and through him, them, the, the Messiah, who is also Jewish, <laughs> the whole world becomes underneath this one true God. That makes no sense. And so I'm not understanding why if the nations had issues with Jewish people, and we know historically there were wars between these groups of people, why? That's just an argument from incredulity, Courtney. Okay, Michael, I keep asking you to explain your answer and you keep giving non-answers. Like I'm, I'm genuinely trying to, if you don't know, just say, I don't know. This is just my belief. Well, let's give it one more shot and then we'll move on. Yeah, uh, yeah. so so Michael, I, are you saying- Or we'll just move on. Well, I'm, I'm going to this point right here. Um, so Michael, do you think just like Paul didn't visit churches? Like when you say, it's made up, like how far does that go? What percentage of it do you think is real or people at least thought it was real? Sorry, I had a text there that I had to read. I apologize, could you repeat that? See you. Um, what, what percentage of the Bible do you think is real or at least the people who wrote it thought it was real? For instance, do you believe Paul went and visited some people and talked to them and you know taught them? Yeah, yeah, like I said, I think there is some I think there is some history in the Bible, right? Like so so yes, I think Paul, you know, did you know, went and talked to some people. Did did he have a did he have the Damascus Road experience? Of course not. You know, like are there things that happened, you know, with, you know, sl you know, slaves and stuff like that? Of course. But did you know, did you know, was Daniel walking around in fire and then coming out not okay? Of course not. You know, were there people that you know walked around believing this you know, stuff and were you know uh, you know so yeah of course yeah of course. Did Moses lead a bunch of people like the, like I guess one of the biggest problems I have with the whole the, that whole story is the lack of any archaeological evidence at all to support this because there's like, no chariot wheels in the Red Sea. Yeah, we we get it. Yeah, all that all that all that all that why all that uh, Wyatt nonsense, right? Um, you know that kind of stuff. When like the 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 population of slaves, uh, and this is like from, I've gotten from people like my my friend Josh is in the audience, and also a colleague of his, Kip Davis, that there's no that there's no evidence to support like the population that would have uh, escaped slavery was more than the entire population of the area at the time. Like it doesn't make any sense. And and certainly there wasn't some dude who held a stick over some water and parted a sea. Well, okay, so and I it's just really like well, well, hang on, hang on. Anti supernaturalism. Well, he has yeah. absolutely no evidence for saying anything that he has. Well, he has yeah, absolutely I, no evidence or standing to make any of those claims, and he has nothing to back any of those claims up. It's an argument from silence. Nate, really, really fast, can you, for a comment in the chat, saying that I said, uh, why you say, what? hold on, why say you can see someone saying Jesus is not real more than Moses? That's outlandish. Did I say that? Why you, say it again. Why did I? He said, I got to find it. Why? Yeah, I don't know that you said exactly that, Courtney. Yeah, like, yeah there, are, there are Jesus mythicists, but right. um, like, like, well, I, hey, hey, well anyway. hang on. I, I don't want to get lost in my point. Like, I agree with Chris. Like, yeah, all that is is anti supernaturalism, and you're just making claims. Like, oh, how do we know that a Bernie Bush shouldn't happen? The, the, oh, because that can't happen. Why? Because you don't believe the supernatural. Why? Because you haven't seen any evidence that convinces you. Okay, so you're just making a claim. Uh, great, I believe that can happen. Why? Because I have faith in God. Like, and round and round we go. But I, I had a question. I don't know if Josh knows the answer to this off the top of his head, but specifically for the Red Sea, I was wondering, right? Because again, taking the Bible where, you know, the, the walls of water pass up so people can walk through on dry ground, um, that would be, I'm just guessing, um, quite a disturbance whenever the water came back in and pounded that ground. So do you know, uh, Josh, Dr. Josh, um, in excavations or archaeological stuff around the Red Sea, like how deeply they checked? Like, did they just go like, I don't know, 10 feet down or something? Or did they, did they like, I don't know, scuba dive? Like how, how far, I wonder, did, did they dig down into the seabed and around the area? 
because I, I just wonder, like, as, as arrogant as people are constantly, they're like, that didn't happen. There is no archaeological evidence. Oh, oh, th there is now? Oh, okay, oops, my bad. Okay, well, how about this over here? There's no, like, every time someone makes a claim, like, there's no archaeological archaeological evidence, it's like, just wait a few years, and there will be. So I wonder in the Red Sea, like, how, how extensively it has been investigated. Because um, I, I just can't help but think, like, if we have enough time, um, people are going to be like, oh, Turns out, however far we like dove into the Red Sea looking for evidence, well, this other group with new technology dove a little further, and oh look, a rusty rag and wheel. Like I'm, I mean, just like wait long enough, and based on everything else, it's probably gonna happen. Hey, um, can I please can answer that clear up in the chat, like please? Do what? Like, uh, yeah, go ahead and clear up your thing, and then we'll see because I think Mir had an answer to that. But yeah, Courtney, go ahead, clear up your whatever. Yeah. So the point in what I was saying is. Moses was an average guy. Why create a myth around an average guy? That would be stupid. Okay. Whereas Jesus is not an average guy. You could see someone creating a myth around something like that. That's what myth, you don't create myths about an average person. That's the I, point. I not, get what you're saying, Courtney. Yeah, not, like, no, 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 it needs to be stated. Not that I said Jesus was a myth. I was simply stating that oh, if one yeah, wanted to, right. Well, yeah, yeah, she didn't say Jesus is a myth. That's ridiculous. Like you don't know Courtney then, but no, I, I would say like, yeah, if you, like to your point, Courtney, like if you wanted to create like a superhero figure, you'd pick Goliath, right? Like you'd pick yeah. some like, you know, big, strong warrior guy that's 10 feet tall and you know, his foot would crush a soul yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Like, like shoots you... bolts of lightning, well, like William Wallace, that's... right? Like remember that? That's not necessarily true. Steve Rogers well, hang on. did become Captain Before... America. <laughs> But no, but Your what happened though, CEO? He went from this this nothing to this great thing, right? That's the myth. Not a Jew who again came out of like he waxed the floor with the 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 nation of people that hated him and all of this, and then you at the end the Jews still win. Like what a dumb myth to create. Um, <laughs> Mir, what's up? You came, you yeah. came up when I was talking about the Red Sea, or was that? Yeah, these science? arguments are really like frustrating because they take all the rules of science, throw them away, and just say naturalism. If you wanted to like analyze this like any other analytics, we would start with historiography. So when you have a group of people, you have to say where did the myth start, and there's no time period in history you can start this myth, because every every orator, every public speaker, when they bring it up, there's nobody in the audience that was like, I don't remember it that way. I mean, it would be like me now, 250 years later, pretending that that um, George Washington split didn't cross the Delaware. He split it like no one would buy that myth. You always have to start the myth from somewhere. So if, if you want to say that thing, something was embellished, those stories happen all the time. But if you want to say it was created from a whole cloth, you have to start somewhere. So it, it, it doesn't fit all our analysis of historiography. And then when they come to um, uh, like archaeology, you have to think about what would you expect to find uh, thousands of years later? Like the wagon wheels just sit inside, like what were you expecting to find? And when you look at what you're actually expecting to find, you find it. You find the roots that, the, that, that Abraham, Isaac, and, and, and Jacob took are the roots that were taken in the ancient world. So now again, was it made up before they did excavations when they knew the roots and then people just accepted it as a myth then? Like it wasn't done by an archaeologist who found the roots. So all, anything you would expect to find, you do find. Everything else is just is just a, um, an argument from from a, a negative, which you can't make. Like you're not going to find every archaeological thing. The, the the kings of Israel, their things have been found. Hathio's ring has been found. The palaces have been found. Exactly where um, Ezekiel said to build a wall around Jerusalem has been found. Like like what what you what you would expect to find has been found. So now the argument just says you haven't found everything, but who expects to find everything? And well, uh, Dr. Josh, uh, also to that, like we don't know which sea. We don't have like thirteen choices. There's like what the, the like you said, the Reed Sea or the Red Sea. I mean, it, it looks like the same sort of body of water, right? Like they're not far away. Like you think out of all this controversy, like this would be like great evidence to prove an incredible claim. Like out of thousands of years, you think people would have like started at the lowest possible point and went to the highest possible point in every body water, of water around there, which is basically like two. So, I, I mean, uh, yeah, that that would be my question, uh, Josh. Well, I'm not convinced your idea would work, Nate, because I don't think the sea split in the way you're thinking. If it did, then it would be a long trek down and a long trek back up. 
it, the water turned into land in some miraculous way. But I'm not sure that we have this like cartoonish idea of like walls of water and walking of the seabed is actually what could have happened. But anyway. Well, I'm, I, I mean, I just read the thing in Exodus. Like, I, I don't remember exactly how it said it. But yeah, no matter no matter how it said it, like the point is like the walls, the wall, it, it said the water became walls. The, wall, okay, the well, water was to them walls from the right and the left. Yeah, well, well, the point is, like, is it buried somehow deeper than anyone has checked? And if you don't know exactly, specifically which place to check, check them all. Like, check the whole area. It's not, like, that big of a, I mean, That's anyways. quite expensive. That's probably uh, why. Well, let's see if Dr. Josh has an answer since I asked. Sorry. Him. And, of, of course, as you guys probably aren't, I only have a minute, but as you guys are probably anticipating, I'm going to be giving, like, a, you know, sort of the view of the you know, the, the field. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of complexity in this, right? Um, so nobody, no, nobody should be surprised. That's what I'm getting ready to say. So like from a, from a historical critical standpoint, the way that, um, these texts have come together, like you don't have one Exodus tradition, right? There are at least three, and so you don't you don't have um, like this univocality. Obviously, the canonical form is trying to bring them together. But um, anyway, what that long story short, or TLDR, as I learned, <clears throat> um, if I use that right, uh, we 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 don't know right what it is that the biblical authors are referring to. So, like I put in the in the side chat, Bernard Bato has a like a really good article. Uh, making comparisons between like what we see in Transjordan and some of the, the toponyms that are used there uh, and their comparisons to Ugaritic texts. Like it, it seems like they may be referring to like a mythological place, um, which sounds weird, but there's a rationale behind it for the ancient writer. But uh, so, so that's, that's part of it. I think the bigger problem, just to take a step back and then I'll be quiet and probably move back down. Sorry. Um, I think the, the bigger issue here is that from the perspective of like the archaeology of the Exodus or of the conquest, um, it's it's actually not the case uh, that that what we expect to find we find. This was sort of the like this was certainly the opinion the first at least in the first half uh, of the twentieth century, right? Like sort of the William Foxwell Albright approach to biblical archaeology it was like. You know, even though he was certainly not consider himself like a like a fundamentalist or something, like he viewed the the basic historical reliability of the biblical text to be sound, right? Um, but as excavations went on in in Canaan, right, or in Palestine or whatever, during the twentieth century, like it became clear, at least to those working in the field, that what you know, the places that we're digging, like Arad, Heshbon, Dibon, um, Jericho, Ai, Lachish, Chatzor, uh, like most of these are just not lining up with what we would expect to find. Um, so anyway, yeah, that's that's where the problem is sort of developed. And this is why the field has moved away from almost entirely uh, like an like an outsider conquest model. Um, of early Israelite formation. Well, I mean, anyway. that almost seems, and I, I don't know if you guys can tell if Joanna's on the phone or not. I, I know she usually has quick questions. Um, mine says she is, but, you know, I have bad. Uh, oh, I see you're off mute, Joanna. Uh, we don't hear you, though, so I guess you have the clubhouse bug. I'd, I'd like to see if you have anything to say, if you, you may have to log out and come back. But, um, well, that, that almost, it, it kind of ta should take the ammo out of the claims of people saying, Oh well, we don't have evidence. Therefore, that's evidence against it. Like absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. But that seems to be the case they're making. And then they always like to cite the Red Sea. So I mean, you know, by it sounds like what an actual scholarship opinion would be is, well, you're not a hundred percent sure where to search. So there may be easily found evidence. You just don't really know where to search. Or it's like you said, completely like, you know, uh, a, I'll say metaphor. You said mythological. But I mean, assuming there was an actual literal place, um, it sounds like you're, you're saying the secular scholarship would say, well, you're not exactly sure the geographic location, if any, they're talking about. 
Therefore, that's why, not like you are very sure the geographic location they're talking about and have came up empty. Is that fair to say, Josh? Yeah, yeah. And, and to be fair, like I, I don't think I've ever read anybody that said we haven't found anything in X body of water, therefore the exodus couldn't have happened. Like I don't, I don't think anybody even. Well, I mean, I think Michael was just trading table. very close to that line. I mean, specifically, oh, sorry. I sorry, I, I may have missed that. Um, I, th I think like the and Kip and I. The reason this is all very fresh in my mind, nobody should be impressed if they are. Uh, is that I just <laughs> recorded a video script uh, or a video with Kip Davis on this topic. So, um, but like, I think some of the big sticking points, and then I swear I'll shut up, uh, are things like, you know, when you go to Arad, Heshbon, Debon, like in the Negev and in Transjordan, um, or the city of Ai, or even Jericho, right? Um, the archaeological picture that we would expect there is like big cities, right? Like this is what we would expect, like burgeoning city states or not burgeoning, but like thriving city states. And like, they're just not there. Most of the sites are just abandoned during the late bronze age. And, and, and that is unexpected, right? So it's, it's not that, it's not that we haven't excavated or they haven't excavated or that the remains aren't there or something. It's just that where you would expect occupation, it's it's gone. So you get an occupation layer from the Middle Bronze Age, and then directly on top of that is the Iron Age. There is no Late Bronze Age occupation at many of these sites that they're supposed to have gone in and, and conquered. So this is why um, archaeologists have sort of had to, I guess, re recalibrate might be the right way to say it. Um, when sort of coming at this data, but anyway, those are, those are sort of the things that come up. Sure. Well, thank you. Uh, Joanne, I see you're still off mute. Um, if you want to speak, we'd love to hear you, but I think you're going to have to log out or something before we can. Uh, I have a chat GPT perspective, Nate. Can I give that? <laughs> sure. Joanna posted a video right. of Dr. Josh's interview with, um, oh, they, what's his name? Um, myth vision just about his leaving the faith so i don't know if that was relevant to the conversation but that's what that video is derek lambert is his name yes so, derek um i was going what is it i kept wanting to say josh i'm like no that's dr josh so nate to answer your question the bottom of a red sea has not been completely searched for evidence of the accidents of that while there have been expeditions the the entire seabed has not been uh, searched comprehensively Additionally, finding definitive archaeological evidence of the Exodus story um, presents many challenges. These include the passage of time, natural sedimentation, and the difficulty of identifying specific artifacts that could be conclusively linked to the biblical account. Thank you, CEGPT. <laughs> and I was just going to say to Michael, like, Michael, do you think, do you think, do you think we're aware of every Native American tribe that tribe that ever existed in North America? Do you think we have archaeological evidence for every one of them? Sorry, what? Do you do you believe we have archaeological evidence of every Native American tribe that ever existed in North America? I don't know about every American Native American tribe that ever existed, so I I don't know. All right, so is it fair to say we don't? Because that's like, I think if you ask the typical oh, someone in this someone field, in field, or you know, if we ask AI or something, it's going to say that it's highly likely we don't have evidence of every tribe because there was no cloud, there wasn't the recording mechanisms, and we have this weird thing about holding the ancient world to modern standards. So they must not exist, right, CEO? Exactly. Um, Mir, Chris, you guys have been quiet. You have anything to say? I mean, nothing new. I mean, Josh did throw in something which is interesting. I could look more into it that the cities were abandoned, which doesn't really um, contradict the tradition that we have. That um, when the Canaanites heard that the Israelites were coming, they they um, did scorch earth policy like the like like the Russians have done, and then rebuilt it quickly when it took forty years. So, if you see abandoned cities, that's not like very shocking. But more importantly, I, I, eyewitnesses and 
tradition of telling of the story is a much stronger than an archaeology of looking back and trying to reconstruct and admittingly you're looking at multiple different stories and trying to put them together so i'm not very impressed when you say we expected to find a large metropolis and we found a smaller city like okay the walls around jericho have been found the exact location of i is not unknown so if that was a smaller canaanite city that's very likely um, I'm not fully familiar with the other cities, I mean, like Hezbon, but we can like look in. But again, when you're doing archaeological digs, like, think about what what will America look like a couple thousand years from now? Do you think like what would be found and what would you expect? And in the early 20th century, they were like looking and found more. And now they're expecting to find like, I don't know, newspapers and the Chronicle of Jer Jericho. Like you found the walls, you found the, the history of the city, and then you found it abandoned at the time. Israelites moved in, and you think that's conclusive proof that there wasn't a war? I don't find that very, like, very convincing. Chris, do you have Funny anything to uh, say? Quiet, Chris. Yeah, I mean, you know, look, there are going to be conservative scholars that are going to take issue with some of the things that Dr. Bowen is saying. Um, there are going to be other liberal scholars that are going to take issue. Part of scholarship is that there is disagreement. And that disagreement re results, hopefully, in more and more science to, you know, come to conclusions that are a bit more decisive. But we just don't have any of that stuff yet. You know, the the archaeological um, consensus in the 19th century is that the Hittites never existed until the 20th century when they uncovered evidence of the Hittites, exactly as the scripture said. It was, there was also an archaeological consensus that, you know, King David never existed until archaeological evidence appeared to show that King David did exist. And so, like you were saying earlier, Nate, I just take a wait and see attitude. Um, I agree with everything that Muir said. Um, and I think that, that Dr. Josh is a fine scholar, um, but I, I find some of his conclusions are unwarranted given the evidence at hand. Well, hey, Tiffany. Gentlemen, That's ladies. JK, Nate. Listen, I challenge anyone in this room, if you're a Christian, oh, to tell us the I'm good news it. of the gospel. Uh, Go ahead. Tell us the good news of the gospel in one sentence. Thank you very little. Nate. We'll call you. Don't call uh, All right. Thank you. I uh, keep forgetting oh, I who is who. It. Everyone has spam accounts. Oh, my okay, gosh. If you see you're a sinner, you're born into sin. Tiffany I, I mean, or is it, is JK, it? it is going to be that yeah, yeah. same dude. Oh, JK okay, hates just, me. Oh, hey. <laughs> okay, I'll figure it out. But, hey. yeah, so, I mean, I guess it's not a bad reminder to, you know, share the gospel occasionally instead of talking about ancient Hittites. So, you're in a world. Congratulations. God created that world. You sin. You do stuff that's bad and God doesn't like. It's against God's will. Therefore, you are doomed. You have a dead spirit. Jesus, God in flesh, came from heaven to earth and uh, uh, was born of a virgin, lived a sinless life, died on this cross for your sins as a sacrifice. He was resurrected, and if you believe that, he can give you eternal life. He says you must be born again, and he will give you freely eternal life to anyone who wants it. So your prayer, that's the gospel. Your prayer to this God who created you and everything else should go something like jesus i believe this i believe you're lord i believe you were raised from the dead and you live forever i can have eternal life for free you say i would like that you say we must be born again make me born again i will follow you um at that moment the holy spirit of god himself will live with you and lead you into truth and understanding you are saved you have eternal life and that's the gospel and i, I forgot in the confusion he wants the gospel in a sentence too bad I was thinking uh, gospel in a minute. I was so going to anyway, say that was a runaway on, sentence. Let me finish my I was just joking. Geez. So <laughs> I know I don't know. It's it's weird, right? Like we're trying to tell people about eternal life, but I mean th that that was my bad. So I mean we have done his gospel in a sentence challenge before, um, but I, I got confused in the confusion and turned it into a gospel in under a minute. But okay, anyways, there you go. So if anyone wants to know the point of this room, it's not about ancient investigations into the Red Sea or the Reed Sea. Um, it is about explaining stuff from a biblical perspective and, uh, you know, being as accurate to the Bible as we can, ultimately leading in people's eternal life with this God that we spend all day fighting with people about. Um, so so there you go. Like, that's the <laughs> whole point. Right. So now after you've got that, feel free to talk about the Reed or Red Sea or Hittites or whatever um, to your heart's content. Uh, I got it. Just, One sentence. Know, do, do so after, you know, you have eternal life. 
For God Absolutely. so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Why? Because your sins have separated you from your God. Run on I don't know. I don't no, know. The why part why, was me. I don't understand why people make <laughs> spam accounts. Like, why what? do people bother? Well, I don't understand why people bother making spam accounts to be able to get up on stage and say I one know. sentence. Or something. Like, like what? Like what's the like what's the point? Like, may, maybe if like you wouldn't have been, uh, like, it like. Are you still? If you're still there, yes, it, is it, it Tiffany. It, which, it's still here. Yeah. Michael, yeah. it sounds like you're trying to use logic. Yeah, I'm not I, sure I, if I, you're I, using your logic in the right place. It's just like, like what, like it just doesn't make any sense to me. Like, why bother? Like, if you come up and engage, like I've, like even just this morning, I've, I've been on this stage saying some fairly controversial stuff to a bunch of people who believe, you know, who believe this stuff is true, and you know, never once did they feel the need or desire to mute or kick me. So just like. What's that? Um, I, I have a side. I'm sitting in my my office slash uh, podcast studio right now. Like maybe get a life. That's well, no, I was going to say. say don't. I was going to say don't be a dick. Um, okay, that's but, like, a cleaner version. Like it just like honestly like just be a de like try being a uh, you know like a clean version. Try being a decent human, and you'll find that people are going to be much more ready to engage with you. He has a very odd belief. He thinks that like all communication is hypnosis and it's basically talking is worthless, but he spends his entire day in audio. Like you're not dealing with a, a, a traditional person. So, <laughs> uh, Hey Rags, what's up? And Paulus, I invited you a long time ago when I saw your invite. Let me know if you're not able to get up here and we'll all, we'll all I'm up someone here. else invite you. Oh, oh my gosh. My Android phone. <laughs> well, what's up uh, Paulus and then Rags? Oh, sorry. I thought you were going to talk to me first, but go ahead. Well, well, I was. I didn't. I didn't see Paulus on stage. I had to refresh. But yeah, Paulus. Hey, how you doing? Did you want to say anything? No, I don't have anything to say. Oh, Rags, what's up, Rags? I was going to try to go after the one sentence. Uh, Christ died, therefore repent. There you go. How about that? That's all I was going to say. Yeah. Well, that, that was too easy. Like the other day, you know, we use Jesus' actual words. It's like repent and believe the gospel. <laughs> so, uh, but, yes, thanks, Rags. Um, let's see. Do we have any other topic near and dear to someone's heart? Uh, Meek Servant. What's up, Meek? Can you... So what's up with uh, being a Christian for 10 plus 20 years and leaving? What's the logic behind that? I assume he must be talking to you, Michael. Josh? I, I can take oh. that one. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and Josh would have been a much better, like, jo Josh was evangelical, went to seminary, <laughs> like, the whole nine yards, got his master's in theology. Um, yeah. But so I'll take it kind of, I'll take it from the layman's stance. Um, I was raised a nominal Christian. I decided to actually dive into it deeper than any other member of my family did. And I became convinced by the evidence, uh, by the arguments that I heard. And the evidence that I thought was uh, was accurate, and I was convinced at the time. I then uh, started reading more, learning more, talking to other people, and my conviction faded away. So um, I know that people will say, "Oh, you know, the Bible says if you left or if you're not with us, that's fine. I don't don't care." Um, you know, if if there was a person who was a Christian, like I believed, I believed I was saved by grace through faith alone. I believed in Jesus' sacrifice. That was the only way for me to be redeemed, all that other stuff. I no longer believe that. What's the point in it? There's no point in it. I didn't seek out. I didn't seek this out. I didn't, I didn't sit down. It's actually, the best explanation actually is there was a guy named David Smalley. He used to hold, host a podcast called Dogma Debate. And he wrote a book called Baptized Atheist. And there was a part that I really agreed with. When he was talking in his book, he said, basically, he... He sought out to be a better Christian under First Peter 3.15. And as he started reading more and trying more, he actually became unconvinced. And that's not unlike my story. And Josh, if, if Josh was still here, he would say exactly the same thing. Um, in fact, he, on our podcast, he has said that he left Christianity kicking and screaming. He did not want to lose his faith, but he didn't have any control over it. So there was no point to it it's just what happened hopefully that answers your question i wonder if we're people where you say whatever you said michael I, I mean i guess another way of looking at that is you know you have seared your conscience 
you know, from the Christian perspective or something. It's like, you know, you look into it enough or enough people ask you questions. I mean, it sounds like some of your examples were innocent enough, but, you know, some people were like, well, look, I just wanted to, you know, really ask questions and do this. And, and I think questions are fine. Like, I don't think, you know, asking questions is bad, but it's kind of like, I don't, I don't know, maybe like a, a heart or even behind it, or even if there's like a self-deception, it's like, well, are you asking because like somewhere you don't think it's true and you're looking for reasons to make it not true or you know you really do believe it's true or or I, I think that can like start someone on a road that could be good or could be bad um i mean the bad way would be like there's there's like a you know you somehow like secretly hope it's not true so that will kind of give you permission or a breath of freedom that you can do something that like if it is true then the bible kind of frowns upon um e even if people like you know don't know that to themselves like it's a very you know unfalsifiable position because it's like well if you're self-deceived to that level you wouldn't know anyways to pick it out but i wonder and then it's like well based on that you you start asking questions that seem innocent enough and then you start like getting evidence and like actually making a case why it's not true and before you know it you're on like you know chief editor of yeah. i hate god.com um, yeah. well they ask <laughs> just enough questions to cause doubt but then they don't take that doubt to the opposite side and say here's why i have doubt what do you think and i don't mean like you're layman i mean like people that do this and say, oh, I've heard this argument before. Let me explain to you why I don't think it's convincing. And then you take that information, you go back to the other side and say, the evangelical says this, what do you say? And then at the end of that, which takes a long time to deconstruct, then if you are absolutely convinced out of religion, have a good day, right? That's your that's your, but I, I, I don't think people do it that way. Well, um, oh, read, oh, yeah. well no, it, it's interesting. So, yeah, I, Nate, I don't think the, the one thing you said, I don't think that's, um, I, I think it's interesting what it is that, that you said. Like for me, it was, um, you know, it, it was, you know, trying in, in earnest. And I, what I would say is there's like, if, because you and I are on exactly the same page when it comes to this, and hopefully Steph doesn't come in and ruin, and ruin it all. I'm just kidding. But um, because we we are both convinced that we can't choose our beliefs, this is not something that I was like, you know, oh, I I wanna I wanna see if I can prove this wrong, because I was, in as much as I can convey, and there will be those who don't believe me, and like I said, cool, fine, have a nice day, but I did believe it. I believed that it was true, and there was no. And the, the, the part that's easy to admit is that if it is the case that I was wrong, there's no benefit for me in that, but I, do, but I have no control over, the, over my degree of conviction. And so like I, while, while it might be the case that what Courtney says is true, I don't think I've ever encountered someone like that. And if I did encounter someone like that, I would look at them, I would give them side eye too. Like that's a really weird way of trying to go about something. Like uh, that, that, w that doesn't make any sense to me. What, uh, which part? Sorry. The reason, I'm gonna let yeah. Michael respond and then y'all go, but I, I just wanted to lay out the reason I asked. Uh, but y'all go ahead. Michael did respond. I think Rags yeah, was wanting to go next. Oh, oh, me. Uh, I don't know. Me was Meek done? Or, or? No, the reason, I don't know where we are. The reason I ask that because, like, I, I love what Courtney and Nate and Michael, y'all, y'all all broke out. And I ask this question a lot because I listen to different testimonies. And you have those who are Christian based off of tradition, based off of how they were raised, based off of, you know, different reasons. Then you have those who actually have these spiritual experiences encounters where that's how they come to the faith so it tends to seem like those who grow up traditional and you know different reasons it's like it's easy to leave that way because there's no solid ground you're on being a christian and reading the bible is not a solid ground really having a having a experience seeking and things like that those testimonies i hear it's more of a solid ground because you have those who used to be into cults who used to be into satan worship who used to be into a lot of stuff witchcraft and stuff like that where they actually experienced and seen things and it led them to christ versus those who go to seminary school read the bible grow up christian because their parents were christian 
never really had an experience and they tend to, you know, lead the faith because we're under, to me, we're under in a world that wants you to be deceived in a way, if that makes sense. So that's why I ask these questions because I, I, my next question is always, did you have a spiritual experience encounter or did you not? And usually they say no, or they thought they had, and I'm like, okay, I can, I can understand why you can lead the faith versus those I, I actually hear who actually have deep testimonies about what they went through. So I yell on that if that makes sense. That, that well, doesn't great. make sense. And that's one of the most insane takes that I've ever heard on Clubhouse in my entire life. Reading well, the Bible that and understanding it is not as good as some type of weird ecstatic experience that you have that can be explained by something you ate or some kind of chemical imbalance. That's insane. And you really need to rethink that, man. So, yeah, I Chris, I wanted opinion. hang on, hang on. I, I, I don't even know. Chris, I was going to ask you a very godly question. Um, I, I was thinking while this was happening, like this may be kind of some people may say it's unfair. But I guess, you know, God can do what God wants to do. Um, where do you think it stands, like, you know, the whole train a child up in the way that she goes when they're old, they won't depart. And I'm thinking, like, you know, how much of that is, um, you know, just good advice or, like, is uh, somehow, like, ordained by God? Um, because, I mean, I'm thinking, you know, probably most of us uh, Christians, like, had, like, godly Christian ancestry and heritage. Like, I know I did. My grandparents, my great-grandparents, like, you know, they, like, constantly um, – I don't know, we're like talking about God and Jesus and singing and like, you know, praying for me during my teen years. Lord knows I needed it. And, you know, I don't know the future, but right now, I mean, I don't see any other any other thing other than, yes, I'm going to believe this just forever uh, because I believe it's true. I'm convinced. Um, so how much of that do you think plays a part in it versus people who maybe kind of dip their toe in the water, but like they didn't really have any godly backing or support or, or something like that? Like the train a child on the way they'll go, so when they're old they won't depart. Like specifically that. I'm not sure I understand the question. Yeah, I was going to say, are you okay, asking no. How is much that a good like... advice versus a command of God? Like it won't happen? No, I think it's just good advice. Like if you immerse. Well, I'm yourself... saying how. Well, well, sorry, let me try again. Like I was in the middle of a Fortnite battle. <laughs> um, oh, okay. I, I know. I, I usually just put the controller down, but I, I'm very close to winning. But no, the Go point get was, how, how accurate do you think that is? Like, if, if you have the advantage of people, like, praying for you, like, training you up, like, teaching you about church, like, teaching you about God, like, how, how much um, benefit do you think that is versus people that don't have that, like, lineage? I mean, uh, advantage to what? Like, people are going to walk away from this. To, like, to, to, to being, being a Christian. To being a Christian. To yeah, not, you need to to not be walking trained. away in the faith. I mean, well, I mean, you're going to walk away from the faith no matter what. You can be as catechized as possible. You can go like Dr. Bowen's example. You can go all the way through a Ph.D. in seminary and and walk away from the faith. I don't think any type of training is going to keep anybody from walking away from the faith. Well, that was, that well, people, people will walk away from the faith if they are unregenerate. Well, yeah, I mean, you answered the question. I mean, you know, kind of how I would expect a Calvinist answer. So, I mean, you answered the question. But that was my that was my thing. It was just like it wasn't a all or nothing. It was just like, yeah, how much do you think? So like, you know, Courtney or anyone else, like, you know, I, I wonder, right? Because ultimately if someone is rebellious and unregenerate, then, then yeah, it's not going to help them. No amount will. But I mean, and then to the other, you'd say, well, if they don't walk away, it's because you've indoctrinated them so much. So, I mean, it's not, it's not like supposed to be a doctrinal point. It was just a question because I was thinking when he was talking about, you know, I mean, it's, I think we would all say it's better than nothing, right? Like we'd say, well, sure. The more godly influence you have, the more, you know, times people talk about God and take you to church and raise you that way. I mean, it's obviously better than not doing it. I, I, I think people would probably agree. But yeah, I was just wondering, like, how much Cat you think catechize your kids? Like, you know, catechize your kids. That's the that's the best thing you can do. Courtney, can I say something? Oh, oh, sorry. Uh, uh, well, Courtney was in, in the middle of. Yeah, Courtney. Yeah, so I mean, I, I was raised knowing about God and Jesus. Um, went to church off and on. It was never a consistent going to church. When I was with my aunt and uncle, we went to church a little more, but it was still never just uber consistent. Although I know since I was a very young child, I have always deeply loved God, just deeply loved God. Okay. Um, I think that the people that push religion onto their children tend to create 
you create a monster. And what I mean by pushing is not explaining, just saying, do what I say, you know, and, and listen to me, not being good examples of the religion, not expressing when, hey, listen, I know the Bible says this and I know I failed. You know, I'm human too. It's like as a parent, when we make a mistake, you say, listen, I'm really sorry. You know, I was a young mom when I was 21. I messed up some things. I apologize. You know, just holding yourself accountable. I think one of the reasons that people fall away is because of walking billboards of false advertisement. So I think acknowledging humans are flawed is the first step to say, listen, I'm doing my best over here. We all are. But here's the way I think God wants us to live. And I'm going to raise and train you up. Like my son asked all kinds of questions. Last night we were talking about religion versus denomination. He was like, oh, I had it backwards. And I was like, yeah, it's okay. And so we're talking about it. So I think people that have the, the head start with just religion literally packed deeply, tightly down their throat, they get burnt out. And I think a lot of people that fall into that category are like fundamentalists. And they're like scared of their Bible. And, and when they get out into the world, they get challenged and they don't know how to handle it. So for that, I think it could be problematic. But the opposite could also be true, that when you have someone that has no ground, no footing in religion, and they're just kind of do what thou wilt. And all of a sudden someone comes in and says, hey, did you know that adultery is probably not a good idea in society nor in religion? It's like, wait a minute. Who are you to tell me what I can do with my privy parts, right? So there has to be, I think, a good ground. And then from there, I think the passage would apply. That's my well, well, yeah, and I would say it's inherent that the passage would apply. Like, you know, raise them up in the way they should go so when the world they wouldn't depart doesn't mean like, you know, beating them, beating them with a Bible belt or locking them in a sin closet. Or, I mean, it would, I think the implication is do it the right way. Like, I mean, I, I, like I would point to my grandparents, I mean, especially. Like, you know, it was never like force fed. But, you know, they definitely wore their beliefs on their sleeve. You could tell exactly where they stood. Um, you know, the, the, so, so, I mean, yeah, not like some, like, awful, like, handmaid's tell uh, version. But, but no. Uh, Meek, you wanted to say something for a while. What's up, Meek? No, y'all kind of y'all kind of hit my point. I think Daddy Chris didn't really get where I was coming from. But y'all definitely, on a surface level, hit my point where, you know, the way you it, you approach it, the way it's come at you, is a, that, that plays a big role. But, yeah, I appreciate y'all. Uh, Regs, did you have anything else you want to say? Yeah, yeah, actually I did. I think Courtney kind of touched on it a little bit. And I was actually thinking about my own journey because there's a point where I almost threw the Bible. I, I just sat through the Bible out the window. And, uh, you know, then there's been several of those throughout my walk where I wanted just to kind of give it up. And I was thinking, going back to Dr. Josh, you know, let's say, let's say there is no evidence for anything in the Old Testament. That doesn't necessarily that doesn't disprove Christianity, you know, first of all. And second, um, if Jesus is the foundation and he's the sure foundation, you can build from there. And ultimately, that's what brought me back to faith, because I go, if Jesus is who he says he is and what happened 2000 years ago is an event that actually happened in history. Then if I put that on my, my foundation there and build from that then it's a solid rock. <laughs> I mean, I know I'm quoting Christianese at this point, but it's, it's true, you know, and I think that's the key. I think people that lose their faith have put their grounding in a wrong, in, in, the, in a place that's not sure enough to handle it. And I think that's why they walk away. My, that's my opinion. So. AB, what's up? Did you want to talk to Chris by any chance? <laughs> Are you speaking Is that AB? JK? Is that JK? No, he's a he's a oh, it's, a it's a new oh. it's a new enemy Chris is making. A B, here's your chance. Uh, three, two. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Yes. Hi. Um. Yeah. I, I asked him. Um, can you hear me? By the way, I have headphones. You're very very low. Uh, barely, but yes. Okay. Good. Okay. <laughs> You're gonna need to yell, yell louder to deal with Chris, but yeah, go ahead. We hear you. Uh, no worries. Yeah. So I was just gonna ask. Um, I think I acted in the chat about <clears throat> why, especially um, the older generation Christians, support um, Zionist movement um, because majority of them, you know, they're not even people. Majority of them are atheists, and you know, people of not 
faith. So I know the younger generation Christians don't. I'm just, I'm, I'm more focused more on the boomers and why they're so, they're so like uh, supporters of this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll take it first. And then Chris, uh, please answer how a normal person would speak. Um, <laughs> but so, so I, I know this comes from, you know, it, it's basically based on teachings from the Bible about, you know, those who bless Israel, God will bless and those who don't. God, God won't bless. So that, that's basically the scriptural basis for a lot of these teachings where this comes from. Um, and, and the general idea is, yeah, well, you know, uh, the Jews are God's chosen people. And then people will scatter like, like crazy and have wildly different views of what that means. I personally believe the most accurate thing is, you know, the Jews are God's chosen people in that he chose these people to send the Messiah. That doesn't mean they're like special. It doesn't mean they're great. It doesn't mean, uh, I mean, look at their history. Look in the Bible. Like bad things happen to them a lot. Like it may not always be a, a fun thing to be God's chosen people. All it means is that Jesus, the savior of the world, would come through the lineage of the Jewish people. That's what chosen people means. Um, and I think that's right. But other people will mean that you need to, uh, you know, support them and everything they do and agree with them or you're not, you know, you're turning against them at all costs. Um, so I think that's where it gets to. And then also, uh, well, I mean, that, that's probably enough. Like, that's why your question, uh, that's the answer to that. It's teachings based on that verse and then all the, like, like media and political and religious hype around it. Like, got to support Israel, got to support Israel, even though they're largely atheistic uh, in the government and, um, and everything like that. And it's like any challenge to Israel is seen as, like, not supporting God's people, um, even though, you know, like Jesus himself says, like, you know, your father's the devil. Because they, they did not believe uh, Jesus was who he said to be. So uh, just because someone's a Jewish person does not mean that you can't disagree with them or, or anything like that. But generally speaking, they want to support Israel and like the land, the geographic location, as well as, you know, the people who are at least trying to follow God, um, even in their own misguided way. Um, do you want to respond to that real quick before Chris uh, gives you his completely normal person take? No, it's just like in history in general, um, this, you know, people use the Bible to justify certain situations. Yes. Um, just like in America, the transatlantic slave trade during back then, it was okay, right? Because of what the Bible said. So it turns out later on, we're like, there's an injustice towards, you know, uh, towards people based on just based on the color of their skin. And it's morally wrong, right? It's a, and so I see it as more people use these verses, like you just meant, as a political reason of causing oppression to a group of people. And again, I don't see this as a Jewish thing, because you mentioned Jews, right? I see it this as a Zionist movement. And I don't see, like, when I say that, I'm not talking about Jewish people, right? I'm, okay. I'm talking about a political um, ideology. So that's why my question is, why do first of all christians inflate judaism with zionism um yeah well yeah i mean I, my, my answer still stands i think that's why because people whenever you say that and use those verses then you can get to political zionism and you can get there from that so i mean i that's that's still the reason but um going back real quick and then, then i'm gonna let other people talk um okay so the the uh, atlantic slave, transatlantic slave trade Right. Certain people. And by the way, scriptures, the Quran, every holy book has been used for good, for evil, for people who are complete atheists and don't even believe their own the book they're saying they do. They're just doing it for political or selfish means. So there's that. Right. Like you could take the Bible and use it to justify through twisting passages and all kinds of stuff to start a straight up cult. People do that. Um, is it because they are well intentioned? Maybe some are just generally crazy and misled. I think a lot of them are like. Well, hey, if we start our own thing, we're the supreme leader and we're like the, the cult leader and no one can challenge us. If we present this the way that the Bible actually says, well, then, you know, we aren't in this uh, power and position to dominate people. And, you know, God is in charge. Um, so, I mean, if they're atheists anyway, who cares? Like they want to be the ruler. So they'll twist things. So I would say that, first of all. But also the Bible, I believe, applied, applied correctly is a large justification for ending the slave trade. Um, and then also, you know, just to throw out some context there, um, you know, the people who have owned slaves more in the history of the world, I think are atheistic communist countries. So no religion is required for brutal slavery. And then, you know, at least Christianity, uh, you know, wildly condemns it based on the Bible. And then as far as other religions, um, I, I, I don't know so much about Hinduism, 
But I know like, you know, the Quran uh, currently says you can have slaves and no one disputes that. Um, so I, I would just say that for some context. But Chris, did you want to give a Zionist, uh, you know, why people support Christians or boomers or you support Zionism or like what the basis for that is? Well, sure. So, I mean, historically within evangelical Christianity, you've got a movement of dispensationalism, which I'm a dispensationalist, but I'm not this type of dispensationalist that would say that the uh, returning of the Jews to Israel in 1948 was a sign of the end times and they would support Israel over and against, um, you know, other groups in the Middle East based on Bible prophecy. And so I would think that that's a bit misguided. I think that Bible prophecy is, should not be used in that sense. But that is, that is the actual reason why you've got an older generation that will support Israel in that sense. I support Israel because it is the only democracy in the Middle East, and there has to be something that goes against the evil butchers that live in Gaza, um, and so uh, as well as uh, all the other Muslim countries. Muslim countries are evil butchers, and there has to be some type of Western style democracy to stand against the seventh century um, savages. Well, you can't say he didn't speak his mind. Um, I have a question. Um, a, are you Muslim? Chris, absolutely. Sorry, me? Yes. Yeah, I'm Muslim. But like that, that shouldn't, again, that identity politics shouldn't. Um, like that shouldn't be like a point of view that you should come from when you're asking me a question. Well, no, 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 no. I so need to go with Islam you. is a political point of view. I don't yeah, understand. But, but no, I need to know what you believe in order to understand why it is that you would like, you, you mentioned like slavery and the transatlantic slavery and the Bible. And it seems as though you're trying to like hint at that. That wasn't my point though, Courtney. My point was... was I wasn't talking about, I'm not saying anything wrong with the Bible. What I'm saying that the point was is that people use religious checks, right, for their disingenuous political movement. I'm not saying something's wrong with the Bible or the Bible endorses slavery. I'm not saying that. I'm saying uh, people use it for, you know, their own. It's about like Muhammad, because that's what Muhammad did. Right, as well as the Muslim Brotherhood, as well as Hamas, as well as Islamic Jihad, as well as exactly. the I, I, Revolutionary I, I, Guard, as well as Hezbollah. I mean, I can go on. There's hundreds of your groups that misuse the, well, that, that correctly use the Quran, ISIS. The Quran is a book that is a political book meant to slaughter the, the enemies yeah, yeah. of Islam. And there is no way that you can do an apologetic against that. It is simply the truth of the Quran and the truth of Islam is that it is there to subjugate anyone who is not Islamic and either murder them, make them pay the jiza, or make them, uh, you know, uh, Muslim. And so those are your only three options. You are in a religion that is an evil seventh century um just just horrendous satanic false religion and you're sitting here trying to use hu like some type of human rights it's outrageous like you, your your self-awareness is zero percent i i just don't understand because like it seemed i understand you said that's not your intent people of course yeah i think everybody will acknowledge that people misuse religion um, but in light of that, like, doesn't Islam say that people of color are like the left shoulder? Doesn't Islam say that um, behind every rock there, there will, you know, there's a Jew go on the live him? Like, it just doesn't seem like a, a fair criticism when Christianity, for which stems from the Bible, right, logically doesn't have a basis in race. Like, it doesn't say that you know, white people or black people are inferior or uh, superior. Like it, okay, Courtney, like, yeah, people uh, misuse it. Nate, but I think Nate knows, uh, hopefully Nate, you know that what Courtney said is wrong about Islam. But in regards to- Wait, Islam, is it? Wait, why, wait, 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 tell me why. Don't invoke Nate, well, tell me why. No, because I'm assuming Nate is more, 
like understands Christianity and has a background. That's what I'm assuming. But I mean, because what you what, said. You just, wait, ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. You just said Islam, but now you're saying Christianity. You're saying. I, I'm you a said, Christian. Oh, oh, you're a Christian? Yeah. What did you think I was? Wait, why does it matter? <laughs> I, I, no, because I was just confused because I. I get, I, it seems like Nate is more, he what? understands about Christianity more. So that's why I took a position of what you just said was just jaw dropping. But, and that's well, why let's try what? To, what? Well, hang on, let's, let's try to, wow. hang on, let's try to. Dude, I'm so on. confused. I asked about Islam and again, she pivots to Christianity. Like what, what? ma'am, can you please explain? Okay. Hang on, let, let's try to reset, let's try to reset a second. So, uh, I, I mean, first of all, A, you, you're being very, patient so thank you while people are calling you basically the devil um so thanks for your patience uh next um yeah so what courtney was saying like i'm very familiar with i mean i don't go seek out muslims to argue with uh but you know plenty of them will come in here so i mean you know i i've um had to you know like brush up on the quran and read the quran and stuff like that so i mean i am very aware of you know the um you know the passages that don't sound great like you know wherever you find christians melt their skin from their belly and things like that and you know, like the pro-slavery passages. So I mean, uh, but I also understand that followers of their act own religion, you know, can use their own apologetics and say, well, that's not what that means. It's like you know, t like takia, right? It's like how you you're supposed to, like one Muslim will say, well, no, it's to lie only to save yourself. Um, if there's political persecution and if you're a minority, then that's the only time you can use it to lie. Where and then someone else will be like, well, no, you can basically use it to lie in order to uh, advance the cause of Allah, peace be upon him. So um, I'm like, well, how do I know? Because that doctrine says you can lie. So if someone says, well, no, you can only lie to save yourself. Well, how do I know you're not practicing Takiyo on me right now? Um, so, I mean, everyone has their apologetics, right? It's just like how an atheist can come in or a Muslim can come in and say, well, you know, the Bible, your Bible says that, uh, you know, Christians, uh, uh, slavery is fine and infanticide is fine. And then obviously the Christians are like, well, no, just read the book. It very clearly says that's not the case. So the, the point is, every religion has what they actually believe and then, you know, what detractors try to say about it. Um, so, uh, yes, like the stuff Courtney mentions, um, uh, what, I, I don't remember everything now, but like I, I definitely know, you know, there are passages that some would say this condones slavery. This condones male oppression. This condones, uh, you know, lying to people. Um, you know, all is the greatest of Rape, receivers. pedophiles. Um, well, well, yeah. well, so, I mean, I... The point is, I'm familiar with that, um, but as far as as Courtney, Chris, ah, Courtney being a Christian, uh, yes, she, she is a Christian. Um, so, which direction did you want to go? A talk about no, Christian stuff, or no? I, I, you know what? I was not going to talk about for for me. I understand you guys see me as evil, being a Muslim. But fine, fine. I don't see Christians like that. You know, I don't see Christians at all. I see Christians as my ally. But, you know, sometimes Christians, uh, well, on the stage, see me as a devil, which is, I'm not going to argue that because there's no point of having a conversation. But I was talking about um, a, a Zionism. I wanted to understand because the question of the book, the question of the room is actually Christian. So I just want to know why the older generation of Christians have this su support on, you know, Christian Jesus. So what was my God. answer to your question, A? What was my answer to your question? Did you hear me at all? Wait, yeah, I was. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on. I want A to answer. Did you hear the answer to the question at all? Yes or no? No, I definitely hear, but it's not like what you said. I don't. Can you repeat back to me? Can you repeat back to me what I said? You literally said that Muslims are evil. And no, 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 no. When I gave hey, you wait, the wait, answer wait, to your question. Because God says that it, I will bless those who bless you. That's the answer. Do you understand that, A? I mean, like. Well, I, hang on, A. So, I'm okay. just confused of why you guys putting, like, when I'm talking about Zionism, guys, I'm not talking about the Bible or the Torah. Like, you okay, guys, that's the thing. That's the thing. Okay, you guys, I, I'm a little. Wait, hang on, guys. Let's let's reset. Like I don't know why everyone is so ah. Like I get it. Um. So first of all, a because she's I being gave, completely disingenuous. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Stop. And lying. Oh my gosh! It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Like all you have to do is say the exact same answer you said again you and did. again and again until we just can we just it. answer so, though? Well, can, well, let me finish my sentence. So a Chris totally answered your question. That's the best answer you're gonna get. Like that is the answer, right? 
Uh, I mean, I believe what I said is how they get there. That bless those who bless Israel. So you say, well, why are we talking about the Bible? The reason so many of these people support it is because of the Bible and like, you know, Bible prophecy and people and like TV preachers that they see who tell them this, like what Chris said was the answer. Like, like your question has been answered. Um, so if you didn't hear because, you know, people are calling you the devil or whatever in the meantime, um, we can explain the answer again. But that was it. It has to do with Bible prophecy and, uh, you know, fulfilling the end times and all this other stuff and like dispensationalism. So if you don't understand um, any of, of the words or the things he was talking about, we can say it again. But, yeah, like that was the best answer. Um, so do you remember that? Or, you know, he can say it one more time. And for the record, um, I think it's kind of like the Catholic Church. Like, you know, some some people don't consider Catholics Christian because they're so widely um, departed from what the Bible actually says. Um, so while I don't condemn all Catholics and don't say all Catholics are evil and Satanists, um, the institution absolutely has its roots in like secular atheist Satanism. So figure out how you can get all of those in one institution. And I believe that's my belief of the Catholic Church because they've been so corrupted. Um, so while I don't uh, say all Muslims are evil and complicit because who knows what level some Muslim of under has about their own religion. So unless I know the person, like, look, if someone's not picking a fight with me, then I won't pick a fight with them typically. Uh, but as far as the actual, because I don't know, I don't know how complicit they are. I don't know how much they know about their own religion. But as far as the actual religion, I completely agree with what Chris said. Um, it is a religion of deception, and I believe it's rooted in demons. Um, but that doesn't mean I think all Muslims are evil, because there's a lot of people who are like, why do you think that? And then we could show them something in the Quran. They'd be like, oh, my gosh, I had no idea what was in there. Anyway, so that's my stance. But yeah, that's, Amy, that's fine. Say, that's fine. For me personally, I I don't agree with you. I personally don't see Christians like that. My experience on the stage about Christianity definitely does not reflect Christians, the everyday Christians, or who are loving people and don't call people the devil. Um, so definitely, I'm not taking any experience about Christianity from anyone on the stage. So that's fine. So, okay, I have to cut in now. It feels a little bit like I came to so like an emotional argument and I'm trying to be logical. Like, by the way, Chris is the only one that called you the devil. No. So, and Chris <laughs> is very open about being like that. He'll be like, yes, I was. But so the point that I'm asking you is like, you keep mentioning like Zionist, we gave the answer, but then you say you still don't understand. Then you say people um, abuse the Bible to use it uh, to subdue people. And I said, yes, we all know that. That doesn't equate that the Bible um, says that you're allowed to make a distinct, you're not allowed to, to subdue a nation just be, or subdue a person just because of the color of their skin, right? And yet I bring up examples in the Quran where it quite literally does give over examples in that regard. And you say it's fallacious. I don't know what part you were saying was fallacious, whether you're like saying, what I said about Islam is wrong, and if so, tell me why. Um, but then you appeal to Nate as a Christian. I, I'm I'm a little like confused as to why you're here, and I mean you're fine to be here, but I'm like I'm trying to get to the nitty gritty. I hate these long drawn out things. Like let's get to the nitty gritty. You don't like Zionism, okay? Great. Um, you ask why is Zionism? I tell you. Well, the idea originated in the Bible. And you say, no, 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 I don't have a problem with the Bible. And I said, well, okay, then you shouldn't have a problem with Zionism. But you still have a problem with Zionism. And then you say, well, because people use it politically. Of course. But does that negate the original intent of Zion? No. So what's your beef? No, no, I understand. I understand. And that's why we're ha it's difficult to have a conversation when you guys can't separate the religion from the ideology and so that's fine i got my answer there's no it's fine i'll just go to the audience hey, no you're say, welcome uh, to be here you're welcome I'll, to be here we're just I'll, trying to understand hold on Laura. we're just trying to understand you say we can't separate there are many there are jews that separate the the religion from the zionist movement uh, i have many jewish friends that understand the difference okay but again I don't understand your problem. Is your problem because there are Zionists that are arguing and fighting with the Palestinians? Is that the problem? No, I never said that. So what's I never the even brought issue? up that. But I, if I mean, you did, you maybe? said they're baby killers. What do you mean so by confused. Jews being baby killers? 
Okay. okay so well, Courtney, I mean, I think we're. Courtney, I think we're. Re- I, it's okay. We're done, Courtney. But you have to do not when we're having discussion. You shouldn't be emotional, and you need to contain that, especially <laughs> having a discussion. Um, oh, so are you? Was, are you literally out of your mind? No, okay, hang on. So everyone, okay, so I think we're Nate, done. Nate, I, 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 how wait. are you gonna let her gaslight? I'm not. She said she was going to the audience. Like she's got her answer. Like so, hey, <laughs> like that. That that is the answer. So going all the way back, you said, "Why do what boomers or Christians or whatever support Zionism?" And the answer is from the Christian Bible. Um, and it was answered like immediately. So I mean, that, yeah, that is so the she's answer. She's lying. So, and then, so, well, it, like, well, it doesn't I'm matter. not emotional. It doesn't matter. I'm simply it, it, answering her question. Okay, it doesn't matter. Like, if someone's well, lying, like, everyone it's listening okay, will, will know that. It's okay, Courtney. Nate, thank you. Okay, so then much. go, ma'am. Uh, thank you. I appreciate it. Like, <laughs> All right. Ain't nobody yeah. emotional. Uh, I'm pointing out that you're being deceptive, which is exactly what Chris pointed out from the beginning. Nate. Oh, the talkie. Th- oh, anyways, uh, Lauren, what's up, Lauren? Were you talking Lauren? to me? Uh, no, Lauren was trying to say something a minute ago. Lauren's gone. <laughs> What's up, random? Oh, Lauren's back. Are you there, Lauren? Okay, yeah, You're chopping up. Yeah, yes. here's yes. broken. Breaking up, Lauren. My mouth. I don't know much more. Oh, you're chopping up. It inspired me to do the robot, though. So I'm in my office doing the robot right now. Okay, random. What's up? I was just I was going to ask more questions, but it seems like it might be best that the uh, the, the previous discussion lay rest. Oh, There's no. nothing. That's probably, Nate is the only one that wants to move on. I think everyone else is fine. Nate doesn't typically like long drawn out conversations, so it's not well, you know outside of his care. Because everyone's just, well, everyone's just fighting, and I have no idea why. Because it's like not like there's a question on the table we're fighting about. Like there was only one question, and it you was you don't know why. It, hold on. He's intentionally causing a Courtney, fight. Courtney, you're getting emotional. I'm kidding. No. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Nice try. <laughs> Okay, so no, I get it, but it's like don't be the troll doll, right? So like, if, if if A is like the most innocent, well-intentioned person, um, or if they're the most uh, most like deceptive, evil troll in the world, like that shouldn't matter how how we react. Um, it, it's like how I, are I don't we know. It's just kind of like my I don't. Uh, well, first of all, not letting me finish a sentence. Well, Nate, so, you, but I'm I, I I'm trying to excessively, uh, uh, excessively. I'm trying so, to understand. I'm trying, no, what like, I'm trying to say is if someone gaslights you, like if I'm there and someone like gaslights me to my face, I'm like, okay, I hear what you're saying. Um, and, and then I just like answer them in a normal tone, not taking the bait. So I'm like, look, I think you're a liar and I think you may burn in hell But forever, Nate, you but don't always answer in a normal tone. Like you're talking to me with a higher tone because you think I'm interrupting you. I'm just trying to genuinely understand how it is. Chris gave an answer. She immediately went to, I'm the victim. Oh, Nate, you, or oh, Chris. I'm the devil. You think the worst of me. I don't think Christians are that bad. Nate's a great exemplary example of Christians. Like you can't see the, you can't see the manipulation. I understand what you're saying, Courtney. See, see how am I doing? Yes. <laughs> but no, it's like, it's like, it's like, you, it's like you can see the manipulation all day long. Don't play into it. Like what has happened? Like now three Christians are on stage arguing about nonsense. Like, the best way to see it is like, wow, I've just been gaslit. Wow, the manipulation is hard with this one. And just like use that and I don't know, spin it, spin it around. Or I, I we don't were know. Trying. Hey, uh... <laughs> but you well, can't. Wait, 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 wait. Every time Chris and I get our teeth sunk into a subject, that's what like, I mean. Right, that's enough. Th- that's what I mean. Spin it around and wind it down, not spin around back. Like, You're an evil Muslim. Ah! Chris said that, not me. Hey, I wanted to uh I wanted to say this real quick. Uh so I uh I don't know why um I think religion is is basically culture. And so um I think that uh, when we start dealing with how people believe and and their ways uh their culture it also plays a role with their uh economic economics and also political things. So they those things tie together. So if, even if you look at Israel, uh God gives them a culture and sets up uh rules and regulations and gives them a government and uh, they divine into him, and then he politically sets them in a place to where um, they can be, you know, uh, hired in other nations by dealing with their agriculture, blessing them, blessing their land, 
and telling them that he will give them rain and the nations will borrow from them. But in in reality, when they come to this place to borrow from Israel or to do business with Israel, that they will hear about the God of Israel and how he can, um, you know, uh, bless bless the world and get the world back uh, in shape. And so when you come in here and you say that, like, stuff like, as uh, far as, like, there's this agenda that we see of Zionists and this and that or whatever the case may be, that's just human history. I, mean, I don't know. If you study world history and human history, I don't know too many groups of people that has not, uh, whether if they feel like they're not religious or, or taking even their ideals to uh, basically, um, you know, p- about use them for economical and also political means. Uh, the Bible also deals with that, too. And I was going to say, as far as the uh, atheist guy who came in here earlier, um, I, I get, I can understand how a person can uh, probably lose faith or have um have uh lose sight of what they believe in because of what happens in the world and people don't want to overcome the world and plus the uh the lies that go about in the world but when you get to a certain age and you've gone through life and you see the human beings just we just tend to keep failing god and you know, a lot of lies going on then clearly um you should get to the point to where you know that even the people who might be over you might be lying to you. And so if somebody tell you, well, there's no history or there's no evidence of, uh, there's no evidence of, uh, Israel and ancient, uh, ancient, ancient Israel or in these lands that they say that they was in. I mean, if you don't understand politics and, and you don't understand how antiquities work, then you don't know if there's evidence or not. You just basing it off of what somebody telling you. And if we, keep going through this cycle of life, we start realizing that people who over us, they just like to lie. They're the biggest liar. The, the Bible says the government and the beast system has the whole world deceived. So if, if you believe them over the Bible and you ain't never been there and they tell you, well, this was this and we evolved from this or we came from this, then you're not really fit for this kingdom. And so I would take the word of God true uh, because it makes more sense to me. Especially when you study world history, it makes more sense to me. It, it's, 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 it's like I can feel it within me. You could, you could, you know, if you, you sit here and say, well, where do we come from? I'm saying, or, or what's our origin, or where do we end up at? And uh, it's, 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 it's clear, that, you know, that the biblical text gives us good examples. I've studied uh, Egypt. I've studied uh, Greek philosophy. I studied all these things, and uh, it's Sumer. Uh, and I, I just be to be honest, I just get a better answer from what the Bible is saying. And so that's to the atheists or whatever. Like, I understand that you we go through, but if you like this thing is not for people who really is is can be tied in their emotions because we're gonna lose family members, we're gonna lose loved ones, but we still gotta make a decision and believe that um uh, that the you know what the Bible said is true and uh, overall than what somebody telling you that you have not even witnessed to these things. Or even looked at. They just told you this and told you that. So I would say that to that. But uh, hopefully that can help the uh, sister uh, A. Because I think that is a disingenuous question that you came up here and you asked. Seeing that Muhammad and uh, every religion that we see uh, has political means. And and uses these uh, books or these stories. Because they believe that their God showed them something. And so I don't know why it poses as a problem. There was an intent behind it. Yeah, I think it was. I think she probably misspoke or she didn't really look in between being a Muslim and uh and all those type of things. She didn't probably see. Jews do the same thing though. You you'll say they'll say they're not religious. No, you you've been brought up in the culture and then that culture is a part of you. You might not do certain things of that culture, but that's the way you was brought up. And that's the culture that God gave you. And so some of those things and some of those other traditions you got from other people when you was dispersed. So you can't take those things and say, um, well, there's, they, they have no pol- political or no economical meanings. The Bible is all about that. Political, economical, and all of those type of things is in the Bible. Uh, religion is, is there. And God uses those things to accomplish his purpose uh, in the Bible. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I'm not perfect. Courtney pointed out my flaws. Uh, you know, sometimes I, I get uh, I, maybe I talk in a certain tone 
but I mean, maybe it's just because I'm excited or I wear headphones and yell. I don't know. I, I try not to, but I mean, I don't know. Just, it, I wish we didn't have to like get in yelling, screaming, like, you know, calling everyone the devil mode. I wish we could do that, but with like more, I don't know, more, more sly, <laughs> which may not be worthy of that thumbs up, but in a, in a more like, you know, in a more like composed, like, you know, under the radar way, like, you know, like when, when the guy came the other day, he's like, Oh, so you're a, quish, a Christian. Yeah. Right. Right. Like, Oh, I just have some questions about the Bible. That would have been a perfect time for someone doing the opposite of my hope to like just freak out and call them the devil, say they're deceiving, say they want to like trap Christians and say how they're, they're not going to take the bait and yell and scream and go crazy and give everyone an amazing YouTube clip about crazy Christians. Um, instead, it's like, okay, we see this coming a mile and a half away. Like, obviously the guy thinks he has something that's going to trap us. Like, we're probably not going to be trapped today. We've done this forever. Um, you know, we know our Bible and we, our whole goal is just to like help people explain what the Bible actually says. So it's like, oh, okay, go ahead and ask your question, buddy. And then, of course, he asked his question. It's completely ridiculous. And we answered it. And, you know, I guess he's like, oh, well, these aren't the type of Christians, um, you know, I can get a rise from. And then he just left. Like, that was great. I was so happy. Um, I don't know. Everyone's got different things. I'm certainly not perfect. Like, I, I have plenty of issues. So if everyone yeah. else. I'm not against servitude either. I don't get uh, chattel slavery and all of that confused with what we see of servitude because I think it's used as a te teaching mechanism to teach people. So I'm not against that. I understand the concept of that. So when people come in here, they get to make it claims and say, well, God condones and slavery. I think what they start thinking about is like chattel slavery and these different types of things where people beat their servants or do certain things or harsh things that they do to their servants, which you shouldn't be doing those type of things. But when it comes towards, um, you know, taking prisoners of war and servitude in a sense or even hired servants, I get it. I understand that. You know what I'm saying, especially uh, those who we see that are taken uh, into um, war and they use as servants. And so they will use these people to do certain things in the land. But I don't think you should meet, mistreat those people and use them for like uh, sex creatures or, you know what I'm saying, uh, uh, agendas, homosexual agendas that you would use uh, to your servants. These, these were people was doing. Uh, judging them because of their skin color. You shouldn't do stuff like that. The Bible doesn't teach that. But the Bible does condone servitude. It does. And, and the guy uses it as a teaching mechanism. The first uh, servant that we see that would come up under a type of harsh bondage and a, and a harsh ruler would be Adam, who comes, who God allows him and permits him to come up under uh, Satan. You know what I'm saying? An uh, uh, adversary to, uh, and cause, and does this for a teaching mechanism. Uh, and, and he's the dirtiest ruler of all, you know what I'm saying? So, um, but God does uh, give um, those who doesn't listen over to their enemies and in, 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 in instances, instances in the Bible. So I don't really, I'm not really against that type of thing. Uh, if it's, if it's teaching how the Bible teaches, ultimately God says that he's going to make his, the servants in the house and uh, joyful in his house, because that's the goal is to teach them, but to still, they still to sit at the King's table, just as uh, the Kings did who uh, went into Babylon captivity, Daniel and all of them, they sat at the king's table and then God gave them favor once you once a person be obedient. And he actually blessed the nation, uh, those nations, while those people were sitting in those places. And so I just wanted to say that and I'm not I don't I'm not afraid when the atheists say that because you guys are talking about the evolution theory and uh, to preserve favored races. Uh, uh, your great philosophers talk about at the same time, why can't God preserve uh, human beings that we see this uh, that he wants to bless from all races um, to repopulate the earth and populate the earth and uh, bless these people? There shouldn't be a problem with that and preserve the human race because that's what God is doing, preserving the human race by means of through his son, Jesus Christ. So. Uh, well, Michael, thanks, Ron. Uh if you're not beating your head against the door or maybe you're just enjoying popcorn, um, you have anything to say? <laughs> kind of working in the background. I heard most screen to see who it was that said it. Um, <clears throat> but um, 
Yeah. I, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm erring close to the side of what my mom was just saying. You know, if you don't have anything nice to say. Um, because Gosh, just... that's the most Canadian thing ever. Yeah. Get the maple well, syrup me. out of your veins and get angry about muzzies. Um, well, Chris, what well, happened to your new turned over leaf, the Butterfield book and, you know, all the other stuff? Oh, I'm, like being, I'm being totally well, rational I'm stoic. And nice and stoic right now. Yeah. Lepers don't change their spots. Um, but it's, <laughs> um, it's, uh, it's, it, it, it is interesting. There was so much that was said, like, you know, kind of a, you know, displayed a little bit of a lack of understanding in a couple of things. And what, what I would say is that uh, when it comes to, like, I was listening a little bit, um, was it, is it A, that is the the person? Who- yeah. You keep cutting out, Michael. I don't know if you're getting a call or something. Uh, Michael, if you hear us, you just went completely radio silence. But Rob, say the last, say whatever you want to say, and then I'm going to have to take off if you're speaking, Rob. Hey, how are you doing, man? Are you closing the room now? Uh, after after we talk to you, well, what's up? Uh, Did I glitch? Oh, well, I was just listening. I, th- I thought I heard. Michael, yeah, yeah. I thought I heard yeah. uh, Laron, Laron say something like evolution is something uh, promotes uh, racism or something. Stupid, or was that just? Oh. Did I mishear that? Oh, I don't have. Oh, I don't have time for that discussion. <laughs> but yeah, I think that he was, was just. Part of what he was just saying. doing the subtitle of the origin of the species. Oh right. Yeah. Okay. It, okay. No worries. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, so, is it? Uh, I think the last thing I heard Chris say was, um, attack people who are Muslim, which I, I'm not big on attacky stuff. But it, is it? Is it a who is the person who is a Muslim? Am I yes. correct in that? Okay. Yes. So I would say a couple of things. I would say one, um, kind of to what Courtney said, um, and uh, I think her statement was, again, I was kind of working in the background, but I believe she said something uh, tantamount to there was likely an ulterior motive. And what I try not to do is, is assign motives to people that, that I, I, I try not to project that onto people. I, would, I, I prefer just to ask people questions, what they mean by something. Um, so there's that. But, but I, w- I will say, and I, I'm saying this only to make Chris proud, um, I do, while I have dear friends uh, who, are, who are Muslim, and I've spoken about one of them before, his name's Mo, uh, Muhammad, uh, everybody calls him Mo, who is one of the kindest, most gentlest people I've ever encountered in my life. Um, Islam in its most extreme form, I believe is the biggest existential threat to humanity that we are currently faced with um, because nobody does extreme like extremists. Um, but I, I, th- I think there was, uh, again, I'm kind of bouncing around. There was a lot said. Um, and I, I think uh, Rob, hey, oh, hey, Rob, a uh, long time no see. Um, Rob kind of addressed or, you know, kind of poked a little bit at what um, I think it may have been what Laurent said about um, evolution. And so, yeah. It, those are my thoughts. Jumbo right, I don't, yeah, Jumbo I don't, they I don't, let, me just, let me just say this is fine. I don't think that uh, evolution, I think that it doesn't promote racism. What happens is that there's these ideals that people use when it comes to living organisms to promote racism through evolution. And so because they believe that they're these favorite races, in reality, if you're dealing with science, each group of people that we see on this earth has something that one other needs. It's like a piece to the puzzle. And so if, you, if you're if you studying evolution, and you should try to preserve human beings so that we don't go uh, self-extinct. And so 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 I, that's, what, that's what I agree with. But I see that there's these other philosophies, how people will use the theory of evolution, and they might use, you know, I don't know how they was up brought, how they was brought up to, to uh, push these concepts and, uh, and, and, and actually, you know, dominate other people not realizing that the very uh if they the very destruction of this other group of people is the very existence of them just with all of us if we just say if, if, if the uh, blacks say they want to go destroy white people well, it's something that whites that we need all of us have a piece of the puzzle uh genetically speaking and so i don't think that we should uh be trying to use the theory of evolution like people would do in the past to try to push it and uh for racism that's what I was saying. So I'm not saying the evolution is the people who takes the concept and utilize that for destruction of another uh, race of people. 
because they believe they're superior race, basically. Yeah, so I, I think... I really gotta are, go. Yeah, I think those are two distinct things, because I, I don't understand what... Um, and I'm being a little bit hyperbolic here, but I don't understand what changes in little frequencies and populations over time has to do with racism. And we never will. All right, guys, join us tomorrow. I will see you all later. Have a good day. Take care, everyone.